Hola, UP, everybody! I am here like five minutes earlier than planned, but you know what? I cannot wait because you know what we have today? You know what we have today, chat? After two weeks of vacation, we're finally continuing Umineko. And I'm eating carrots. Yes, we're gonna see Beatrice again! I hope so, at least. Okay. Since I can't wait so badly, without further ado, I'm starting right now. So, since we left the last chapter, the background of the main screen has been this. And I need to see something very quick. Yes, or there. I was checking if my chat overlay was still on. But then I was saying, the main menu background before, for chapter one was the entrance of the mansion, and now it's this aquarium, and I'm curious what this means. Okay, before we begin, I'm gonna give a very quick recap of what happened in chapter one for those who haven't seen it. Um, while you can see the, uh, the VODs in YouTube, I'm gonna give a, ve a very quick TLDR version. Okay, so in chapter one we meet a bunch of rich people. They want money. They start. Uh, there are four siblings, four adult siblings fighting for money and some gold. And their grandpa is like, fuck you guys, I'll never leave my room, which is like a tiny condo. All I care about is Beatrice, this, this witch, this beautiful, beautiful woman. And you will all be sacrificed. And the, the, the kids of the four rich people are like, oh no! Six people have died, and then more people die in the next night. And then two women uh, start fighting each other. Like, one points a shotgun and the other holds a, a fan. Then more people die, and then Beatrice appears and more people die. Q. Batter was like, no, witches are not real. I will prove you there is a human murderer. And now we start chapter two, where after this challenge has started. So this chapter is called Turn of the Golden Witch, which I assume, after the discussion that Pathway had with Beatrice in the ch chapter one, that he's like, okay, Beatrice, it's my turn now. And she's like, no, it's your turn when I say so. Oh, where's the text? Oh, there we go. Oh, this outfit is so cute! Look at her! It's Shadow and she's not dead! My assumption is we are looping a little bit in time. So let's see how, what this leads us in. <clears throat> okay, sorry. Sharon found a pair of hammerhead sharks swimming playfully in the tank. Hammerhead sharks are awesome. And looked as excited as a great schooler seeing an aquarium for the first time. <gasps> Is it a date? I think it might be. <laughs> look at their outfits. They look good. I'm pretty sure Portuguese people are the same. <laughs> or at least in part. Portuguese too. <laughs> I speak from experience. At least from the part I grew up in. Yes, George, I agree. She looks awesome. Shannon clutched at her chest with both hands in embarrassment. She apparently felt like she was being made fun of for wearing these clothes she wasn't used to. Though George's face doesn't show it, he'd actually said something so completely unexpected uh, that it surprised even him. Also, I think my volume is a little bit high. Okay, this should be good. <clears throat> 
and he was his embarrassing Shannon on the inside. <laughs> However, when he saw how embarrassed Shannon was, he started to imagine he was teasing a girl he liked, and instead of embarrassment, a ticklish amusement welled up in him. <laughs> no, he wasn't just imagining it. He really was teasing the girl he liked. Before now, he wouldn't have expected to hear a line like that anywhere these days, not even in a manga or something. In fact, he'd seen another couple acting like this. His first instinct would be to start throwing rocks at them. <laughs> wow! But even if someone were to start throwing ro rocks at us now, I'm sure they'd be no different than confetti celebrating our relationship. Ah yes, getting thrown's rock at, it's confetti. <laughs> Now I can't even remember those lonely days, when I felt jealous of uh, couples who were completely oblivious to their surroundings. To use an old-fashioned phrase, these really are our rose-colored days I'm living in. I'm so entranced that I barely notice that massive tank in the world's largest aquarium anymore. Instead, all I see are the expressions uh, flitting across Shannon's face as she plays with the fish. Oh, is this a, a George-centric chapter? Oh my god! The tank is large! Like a whole a whole ass blue whale? I hope not. <laughs> that, that's gigantic. I'm going to assume they mean like um, a whale shark. Offer if you hear me crunching, forgive me, I'm eating carrots as snacks. それはすごいですね。本当に素敵です。水槽じゃなくてまるで海の一部をナイフですっと切り取ってここに運んできたみたい。そうだね。これはもう立派な小さな海だね。Look。Look at the fishes。They're cute. Despite its size, I haven't thought of the tank as anything more than a tank. That's why I found their metaphor so interesting. No matter how far humans broaden their experiences, they always end up viewing the world through the lens of their own values. Maybe that's why it's so interesting to interact with people who have different worldviews. I voiced my thoughts on this. She responded. <laughs>海だと信じたならこれは確かに海なんです。たとえ有限の水槽の中だったとしてもね。海だって有限ですよ。うん。仮に無限だったとしても私たちは生きているうちにどれほどの広さを行き来できるんでしょうね。きっとそれは海より
I'm actually wondering if what Shannon said about it, uh, if they believe that it's the sea, then it's the sea. If there's, if something similar is going to be used about uh, the Golden Land, like if they believe the Golden Land exists, then it will exist. Or maybe I'm just reading too deep into stuff. <laughs> Batteries in all caps! <laughs> I love how the names are written like... Rosa Oshinomi. Wow, that's a large logo. <laughs> but as I was saying, I love how, how it's like... Saying the names all formally. First name, last name. All in... Uh, like... Oshinomi Patra. Oshinomi George. Oshinomi Rosa. And then there's BEATRICE in full caps! <laughs> oh, these backgrounds look nice. After we finished walking through the whole aquarium, we had a small late afternoon lunch at the restaurant with a nice view. The word buffet has the power to make any boy's heart leap. It was like that myself once. I was like that myself once. But with Shannon beside me, this buffet felt different. <laughs> I couldn't shamefully pile on only the things I liked. I was, how should I put it, worried about my appearance and cho choose a menu suited for a snob. Salad? Okay, <laughs> I call it! Toast salad and a coffee. If I'd been by myself, I would've made a pile of oily stuff like yakisoba, mashed potatoes, gratin and so on. Yakisoba is good and mashed potatoes. You should pick country potatoes. Mashed potatoes is kind of just eh. <laughs> Shannon, uh, so de ga no kai? Now, if you were in Portugal, you would sit down and instead of uh, asking for like a tosta mista and a salad and some uh, garong, you would be like... <laughs> Sorry, you would, be <laughs> you would be like... Policianza or like, excuse me, I want a francesinha and a coca-cola. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. That was Tara. Otokotenoa, Pontoni, Nempino, Varui, Kimono, Rashine. For those who don't know, uh, Francesinha, the food I just mentioned, is a Portuguese dish. That is basically a sandwich and a sauce. It's very heavy for the stomach, but it's good. <laughs> On Shannon's tray, there was only tea and salad. Oh, maybe the mere fact that I thought she was a whole plate so short proved I was thinking with a man's stomach. Yes.。Eat some meat or some fish. I think she would even know what food to make. <laughs> Sharon was kind enough to guess what I, that I wasn't feeling well. It was like my stupid attempt to show off made her worry. Remember guys, eat. Eat and don't worry your, <laughs> your potential dates. Male or female or non-binary or anything in between. And apparently my stomach wasn't going to let me show off any longer. Yeah. もう白状するよ。ついつい格好つけちゃってね。遠慮しちゃって。それではとても足りないと思います。遠慮なさらずにどうぞもう一皿を取りに行ってきてくださいな。Yes. Eat Shannon fell silent and blushed bright red. Apparently, I wasn't the only one showing off. When I realized that, my embarrassment disappeared completely. Nanda, Shannon, mo sore ja tarinai jana ka. 
そうだよそうだよ普段のランチならもう少し量が多いものをペロリと平らげてたよ Yes, eat some carbs, some rice It gives a lot of energy 女の子のお腹は魔法でできてるからこれでも平気なんです Oh, yeah, it can be made of magic, all right Depending if you can eat two whole Francis i n g s I guess ということは僕たちは互いに見えっぱりだったってことになるねもう遠慮はなしにしないかい Yes, eat I smiled to show that I wouldn't make fun of her anymore and rose from my seat. せっかく沖縄まで来たのに、ゴーヤを食べないのはもったいないからね。Hmm. ゴーヤの炒め物でも持ってくるよ。Fried bitter melon? I don't think I've had that before. ほらほら。To anyone watching us, we might seem like an incredibly charming and embarrassing couple. But it's only after becoming a couple that you realize. To us, this exchange of worlds,、uh, words is everything our entire world. That's why, no matter how much everyone else stares at us with blank expressions, we never notice. Indeed, at this age, I finally understand the feelings of couples who want to endlessly flirt without any regard to,、uh, for their surroundings. After I return with a plate、uh, piled up with fried food, Shannon arrives with a pretty cake. While laughing at our fake sto stoicism, we resumed our lunch. せっかく海を一望できる展望レストランなのに、あいにくのどんてんが悔やまれるね。Luckily, our window seats gave us view of seaside scenery so grandiose that it extended even beyond our field of vision. However, because of the cloudy sky, we were only seeing a fraction of its usual beauty. After chapter one, I, I feel immediately uneasy when there is not very good weather. So, Dane, Fudan, Lokenjima de Umi or Minarete to Mokedo, Kokono Umi or Kito, Kakubet now so Miss the Greta has there. Zan Nendana. Oh, Debo, Oshimoto no Saitu in Mir Umi. どんなに青くても灰色と同じですでも今日はお仕事中じゃないからその Apparently Shannon was doing her best to say an embarrassing line But I didn't let her get off easy 惜しいなジョージ様と二人きりで見る海ならたとえ灰色でも真っ青に見えますって言えたら100点満点でご褒美だったんだけどな。What kind of prize is the question? すみません。She's so cute now! ご褒美は何だったか聞きたい。えっと、その、聞いてもいいものでしたら。ダメ、教えない。<laughs> wow, George, you mean he? <laughs> When I was in elementary school, I was always the kid who got bullied. When everyone teased me, I grew nervous and speechless to the delight of bullies. Back then, I wondered why everyone teased me. But now, teasing Shannon like this, I understand why. This is so much fun. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I can play with her emotions however I please. And I can have them all to myself. That sounds a little bit wrong, but <laughs> alright. Right now, I can't think of any greater pleasure. That's why I have to go easy on her. It's not as though I want to make her feel embarrassed and upset. So I decided to be nice and change the subject. Best not to be too obstinate. <laughs> Oh, going for the sunset at the beach. Good taste, I see. Hmm, so s h o r e But, o the cake is really delicious. I'm going to take the same thing. I can't. If I eat a cake in the morning, I'll eat a cake in the morning. Let him eat! The judge is like a cake in the morning. I'm going to take a cake in the morning. What's wrong with that? じゃあシャノンは僕がおデブになったら嫌いになっちゃう僕は
That is correct, a true child. <laughs><笑>母さんにもよく注意されるよ。やっぱり僕も対極拳とかを始めて運動しないとダメかな。Exercise is always good. I say as I avoid exercise. Okay, not really. I'm kidding. I bike every day. Yes, moral of the story, eat well, always. つまりそれはデザートのケーキは控えろってことだねじゃあ仕方ないからシャノンがそのケーキを頬張るところを眺めていてあげるよ その。ケーキ丸々一つはさすがに食べ過ぎだと思いますけど。半分くらいだったら大丈夫かもしれません。これ本当に美味しいんですよ。I need to do something real quick. Uh I made myself some tea as fitting for Umineko time. I just have to take out the the tea bags. All right. Here we go. Shannon cut her own cake and tried to move half to my desert plate. Yes, I had no doubt that she wanted to share the delicious ca uh, uh, cake's flavor with me. However, I meanly pulled my plate away from her. She blinked in surprise. She couldn't seem to figure out if I was refusing the cake or not. So I winked, opened my mouth and said, Ah, <laughs> he's doing it. <laughs> Yes. Hi. <laughs> Help. With a partly embarrassed, uh, partly exasperated face, Shannon offered the cake to me with a fork. Chomp. <laughs> it tasted like a cheap chocolate <laughs> cake you might find anywhere. Lord Shannon. Yet it was exceptional. Because eating cake in such an embarrassing way, as if we were a couple of perfect fools, had been my dream for many years. It made this cake's flavor heavenly. If the earth is destined to end, I won't have any regrets if it happened right now. It was just a moment of bliss. Ah yes, getting fed cake by, uh, by your crush. That is quite the dream. I agree. It's a great feel. After that, we got shells from from waves and enjoyed each other's company while walking along the beach. In the end, the clouds never parted. However, we both believed that the sea reflected in our eyes was a deep blue. That's romantic. そんな私が後ろ宮家に連なる方とこうしてご一緒してるなんてその住みたことのように思えてのよ no, you deserve it you deserve to be happy シャノンちゃんと出会ったのは昨日今日のことじゃない何年も前から面識もあるでも年に何度もない親族の会合の席で挨拶をするだけ そんな君と<笑><笑> She thought about it? Help! This is too much cute! I will, I will die! I will actually pass out! Ooh. They are too silly! Dummies. 
君のその信じた心のおかげだね。思う力には魔法が宿るんだよ。Yes. だから、その魔法がきっと僕らを巡り合わせてくれた。The power of love is magical. そうですね。多分きっと。それは本当に魔法だったんだと思います。でもね、そんなことはないんだよ。僕の中でも。毎年出会うたびに美しく見違えていった君の存在はとても大きくなっていたそして、oh、君にとっての僕も同じものだとしたなら the romance and the cheese is off the charts here 今日ここに僕らがあることは必然の結果であって魔法や奇跡なんかじゃないのさ、うん、奇跡はあったんですジョージ様She stopped walking down the beach, gazing out beyond the sea. I was be bewildered by that slightly mysterious phrase which I sometimes heard her use. <laughs> それは何かのおまじないのことそうですね。そういうものの類いかもしれません。一つ違うのは、おまじないなんかじゃなく、本当に本当の魔法だったという点です。Rituals are always and bad, I, I think. At least. The kind of ritual George was thinking about because they are good rituals, of course. Such as the ritual to bring、uh, Beatrice back. Maybe it's all girls, not just Shannon, who tend to treat encounters as miracles or coincidences. For a man like me, an encounter with a girl is 70% hard work to try to make her like you, 20% courage, and 10% confidence. Men confirm, please, <laughs> if this is true. The part that means everything to her is a much smaller factor in my mind. Maybe that way of thinking itself is calculating and typical of men. But if I say that out loud, it might dissolve all kinds of magic. To my mind, there were lots of coincidences, compromises, and expended effort on both sides before we gained the relationships we have today. At the culmination of all that, we, we get to spend this joyful time together. And if she wants to call that magic, I've got no objections to her choice of words. So I'll stand up for that magic.、ね、you should. I'm going to go to the next one. I'm going to go to the next one. I'm going to go to the next one. I'm going to go to the n e x Repeated a hundred times. You mean. Like how it's possible this story will be repeated? So, now you saw no second of Bokura Karamiriba. Imano Boktachua, Masani, Kisekino, Yona, Kankani, Chigai Nida Rokara. So, you know, Janakte, Hontoni Maho Nandes. Hm, Ikura, I demo, call you no, Shinji, the Morai Nain, the Shok, Kanon, Kumo, Zenzen, Shinji, the Kurema Sensi. Oh, damn. That's unfortunate. Bokura, Shinji Nakte. ね、Q batteries coming in and bonking him on the head. You did not believe, you liar! In a small voice, I apologize for saying something that trivialized her magic. Shannon seemed to be glad to hear me say that. After all, if two people believe in the magic of love, it becomes eternal. So, so. This sounds like a quote that came out of Sailor Moon. <laughs> like in that same kind of vibe. はい、何でしょうかそのジョージ様って呼び方嫌いじゃないけどもうなしにしないかい<笑> ?Are we going on first name basis without 様対面もあるだろうから六軒島での普段まで強制はしないよでも二人きりの時はなしにしよう Oh wait, doesn't he like address this in chapter one? You know, the night he proposed to her? In chapter one, like, what did she call him? George, George San or George Kuhn? I don't remember. <laughs>、うん、うう 
Oh no, I hope this isn't a flashback and we're like back to everyone being dead. Please let this be a loop. Oh no. Oh no. いいえ、聞きたくありません。何がいいか、僕も考えておくことにするよ。はい、ジョージさん。いや、オッケー、ゴーストさん。うん。素敵な響きだね。嬉しいよ。シャノン。あ、私も。お、is <laughs> そっか。ルールはフェアじゃないといけないね。僕もそれを守って今から君のことをサヨと呼ぶことにするよ。いいね。これそまうだい。It's held her shoulder and drew her close. When I forcefully pulled her delicate body towards me, she dove into my chest like a doll, like flop. As I held her head in my arms, we both looked at the horizon. Oh yes, before the witch appeared? As we, as we gazed at the grey sea and a light rain began to sprinkle down, we kept listening to each other's heartbeats. That was so much cheese. So much vanilla romance. The sound of waves flows into my ears. No, it's the sound of an enraged sea. My body, bathed in painfully cold splash, it does not allow me to forget. I won't let me forget the memories of the day my old fate was broken and smashed. Once tomorrows were literally like looking into a mirror. All I ever saw there was a person I already was. Tomorrow was absolutely no different from today. That was my old fate. But then, for the first time, I saw a different fate beyond the mirror. The witch whispers to me. She tempts me to take a bite out of the fruit of knowledge. She torments me, saying I'll be furniture as long as I stay in God's paradise. Oh, did we switch to uh, Shannon's perspective? So I decided to choose the path of knowing love and try to become a person. Those days were like sweet honey. But at, t at the time, I didn't realize that they'd be the start of a new kind of suffering. I'd arrived at a small island on a motorboard I've only just uh, learned how to use. No, this can hardly be called a small island. It's little more than a rock jutting out of the water. On this rock is a tori and a small shrine. It was probably bu uh, built to worship the guardian deity of Rokenjima. Even though I don't know uh, exactly what it signifies, I know it has to be something holy. Even in a place like this, I've got to take just one more look around to see if there's anyone who might get mad at me for coming. I see nothing but the stormy ocean, ocean, Nijima looming in the distance and the waves breaking against Rokinjima's steep cliffside. What's gonna happen? I ready myself, timidly approach the small shrine and take the mirror that lies there as an offering. The mirror looks old, cloudy and dirty. That would probably make my any normal mirror seem horribly cheap. However, since the mirror has been placed in a small shrine, its appearance seems to give some sort of divine quality to it. And there's one thing I can tell. This is no simple mirror. It may seem like an old battered mirror into a non-believer like myself, but it has a great significance. Is it really okay to break this after being captivated by honeyed words? No, this isn't really a mirror. This is the life I couldn't escape until today. My fate. I'll break it. I'll smash it and seize the life that lies beyond this mirror. If I don't smash it, my life will be a pair of fa facing mirrors forever. Nothing will ever change in the slightest. Yes, Shannon, break the mirror! The, the witch whispers to me. She tempts me to take a bite of the fruit of knowledge. Or maybe I've already tasted that. I uh, have the taste of that fruit. After all, I've already experienced those maddening emotions. Just as Adam and Eve felt compelled to pluck their fig leaves, I can no longer go on without breaking this mirror. I struggled with conflicting emotions for many days before this moment. 
Inside my heart, the virtuous part of me kept on fighting the part that sides with the witch. And now, here I am. Did the part of me that's here right now win or lose? There's only one thing I know. To obtain something, you must be ready to lose something. Cowards who don't risk anything, who never try to change anything, will never be given the key that opens the path to a new future. That key is already in my hands. Oops, sorry. <laughs> and that key is to break this, to smash it. Is there any other effort I can make as furniture imprisoned in Rokenjima? No. This is the only way for me. Come. Have courage. I'll free myself from being mere furniture. Mere furniture. And by accepting a new kind of suffering, I'll become human. This is uh, this surely... Oh, sorry. This is surely a small yet large trial I must impose on myself. Come on. Smash it. I'll smash to pieces the eternally unchanging fate that imprisons me. I raise the mirror high. I think back on the days of conflict that came before me. And finishing my reflections in the blink of an eye, I throw it to the ground. The thunder roars, crying out against me for my outrageous act. It truly is the hatred of angels trying to banish me from my eternal paradise. I look down at the mirror tumbling at my feet, broken in two equal parts. And after making sure I've accomplished my task, I scream up at the raging skies. You speaking to Beatrice here? Thunder roars once more. I've already been banished from my paradise. So I'll have to struggle on my own if I want to live. The witch told me. That is the single element of this world. To lose it means losing the world. Like how a canteen with a hole in the bottom can be filled, no matter how much water you pump into it. Please, Beatrice! <gasps> Oh, what's this? Opening? Woo! Normally they give the option to skip, but this time I'll watch. Woo! Or is it- wait, is this the same opening as the first one? I wonder. Let's go! Whoa! It's Maria! Baby girl, baby! Oh, I really like the, the motion graphics in here. Being able to do motion graphics like this is goals. And the song is good! Oh shit! Now, I wonder if they left uh, hints in the opening for what's happening. Oh, that's a different George sprite. Maria, no! Oh, no! A bottle. With a letter? Oh. Is that... Is that like a reference? Okay, so I don't know if this each uh, chapter will end in the same sort of way in which you have... Wasn't it like that in the end of the, uh, chapter one that there was a bottle with Maria's message inside? I wonder if every loop uh, ends like that, if it's a time loop. My one mind wandered. Uh, back to the days when I could barely imagine the happiness I have now, I was a middle schooler at the time. A normal girl who thought about love as much as you'd expect of someone at that age. But in truth, it was wrong of me to have that dream. After all, I am furniture. Furniture is nothing more than a tool, not a human. As a person less than, than human, simply receiving an education was an enormous blessing. So in reality, even thinking about falling in love was more than I deserved. 
to Shiromiya Family Conference was a customary event held every October. Oh! So this month, I see. But relatives sometimes visit it at other times. Of course, they didn't come just to drink tea. On this day, Eva's family was visiting the head family on Rokenjima. The three members of Krau's family and the three members of Eva's family had gathered in the parlor. We were having a friendly chat about recent events. Genji had supposed, supposedly told Kins of Eva's family's arrival, but he still didn't come down. Of course he didn't. He was probably immersed in his research and couldn't spare the time. This often happens, so the others waited patiently for their fickle father to arrive, which was, will probably be never. That was a lot of text for very little voice acting. <laughs> I'm, I'm probably sure it was like the context of just the whole text in, in small and had to be translated that long. I'm not jabbing. その that is correct, Hideyoshi. That is so true. Hmm. <laughs> but look, it's very true. Like I, I spend a lot of time in school learning things that I would never use in my in my job, aside of like writing and English. But that's, but that's it. The classes that were relevant to my things were like in um, college, but... <laughs> Does she only talk like this about George? <laughs> Once people started praising George for his diligence, the conversation usually turned to Jessica, who hated studying. Whom uh, Jessica made an openly displeased face, as though she'd known this would happen. Don't, don't you dunk on Jessica too! As if dunking on your wife isn't enough! Yes, Eva. Correct. We do not need to entertain men. <laughs> あ、今日は頭痛が特に答えます。大丈夫ですか夏氷馬さん、顔色が優れないみたいです。ありがとう。大丈夫です。でも本当に月日が経つのは早いものね。半ズボン姿で浜辺を駆け巡って、ズブ
Oh, sausage was just a way to jab at Natsi again. I swear these two women... <laughs> I swear their banter fascinates me. They're, they're like two cats hissing at each other <laughs> in passive-aggressive ways. Oh, but you can, huh? Jessica. Well, Jessica was still at the age where tests and entrance exams are pretty nerve-wracking. Recently, she clashed often with her mother, who was enthusiastic about her education. <gasps> Jessica was trying to leave the parlor in a bad mood, bumped into Shannon, who was pushing a serving cart filled with tea. Oh, Shannon, I don't have any tea. Damn, Jesus, chill. <laughs> Please, have some mercy on Shannon. She's a good girl. Shannon hadn't actually done anything wrong, but Nazi, who felt like something shameful to herself had been shown, lashed out at her emotionally. This was something that often happened in the Ushiromiya family. Oh, okay, yeah, uh, I can imagine that. I can always imagine that they lash out at someone who they can, as rich people or people in power do. <laughs> so something... Blah, blah. But it seems Chan wasn't strong-willed enough to just accept it and move on. She shrank back and cowered while serving the tea. She had the unfortunate habit of making more mistakes when she cowered. Her pitiful appearance ruined the peaceful atmosphere that had existed in a moment before. It was merely Shannon's fault, but she thought she might be the source and felt that pressure on her chest. Aww. Her shaking fingers made the utensils clang and you couldn't uh, have called it graceful, not even just to be polite. The more pitiful she appeared, the greater the silence grew. The more irritated Nazi looked and the more Shannon cowered. Shannon's thin neck felt like it was being suffocated and choked by the reaper known as stress. At that time, George spoke brightly, blowing away the stiff atmosphere. Yes! Hero! I feel like this is something Hideyoshi would do too. As in, like... I think it happened chap in the chapter before, that Hideyoshi often dispelled very tense atmospheres. I think George has a similar has the same trait as him. これは特徴的な匂いだから多分わかるよ。<笑><笑><笑> お世話になっている社長さんにこうちゃの詳しい人がいまして、公爵を聞いているうちに少しだけわかるようになりました。オッケー、で、アートオブティー。ああ、おこのぎ食品の社長さん会。おこのぎ。Is Or is it just a coincidence? じゃあこれはアールグレイという土地で栽培されたのが由来なのかしらね。昔、イギリスにグレイ伯爵という人がいたそうで、その人にちなんでつけた名前だそうだよ。あは、オッケー、ロシン、ロシン。ちなみにこ
夏日姉さんも愛用してる頭痛薬の説明書<笑>今度はじっくり読んでから飲んでみなさいよ<笑> Ever waste not a single second <笑><笑>それはいい。今夜試してみなさい。What the fuck, <laughs> man? 試してみます。She was in a good mood. シャノちゃん、そのポットを開けてごらん。<laughs> like that expression, she was like, yeah, I'll try that. Jesus wept. <laughs> 茶葉の中にベルガモットを乾燥させたものが。Can I breathe for even five seconds? And、uh, Nazi is like. Oh. 入っています。オレンジの皮を乾燥させたようなものが混じっていますうん多分これがベルガモットだねアールグレイの香りの主成分だよ匂いは鮮烈だから味がきつそうな印象があるけど素直で飲みやすい味なんだよミルクティーにすると香りもまろやかになって素敵かもしれないねみんなに注いでポットに余った分があったらぜひミルクティーにして飲んでみるといいよあジョージ gave it a small wing. Sharon finally realized that George had kind heartedly swept aside the tense atmosphere in the room, and he had done it for the sake of Sharon herself, a cowering servant. The Shumia family did not pamper their servants. Any display of awkwardness would be harshly punished. So it was rare for them to be given a helping hand like this. Thanks to George's kindness, Sharon managed to regain control of herself and finish serving tea without further incident. As long as she stayed calm, she could carry out her work elegantly and flawlessly. Yay! By the time the black tea was laid out on the table and its elegant scent filled the room, the atmosphere had completely returned to its former peaceful mood, and everyone praised George and all it. Peaceful mood as long as ever lets it. <laughs> Sharon wanted to thank him for saving her, but it didn't look like she would get the chance. So she decided to at least thank him inside her heart, praying to God that George would hear it as she pushed the serving cart away. George and Isa are in the past, and you can help me with the help of the people. You can help me with the help of the people. You can help me Shannon and Jessica were in the Rose Garden. Jessica still hadn't returned to the parlor after getting into a fight with her mother and was nonchalantly killing time here. That's very nice. Whenever I made a care uh, careless mistake and George was around, I'm pretty sure he'd always naturally smooth things over and restore harmony. Maybe it wasn't as direct as picking up a fork that had been dropped. But that was his way of caring. Even servants have their pride. They want to fix their own mistakes by themselves, and if a guest lends them a hand, they'll lose face. So you cook your yomino at all green and rose, eh? Ma, George Nisan no big up in under all your. I know he told me only kids at the sea to call out a canna. So, so not got a rimasa. Totemos taking a catada to my massa. Uh oh, for once Shannon had disagreed with Jessica in a slightly forceful tone, which immediately caught Jessica's attention. Mm -hmm. Family oriented girls, what does that mean? Hmm. You think? I don't think so. Nanemo Mukashkara Kao said it, Nakaba Osana Jimmy Jotai. Tagani Danjo de Arakoto is Kishina, natural and a cankatinoa. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> Jessica loved teen magazines with this kind of story, and she was always getting excited talking about that kind of thing with her friends. She was very quick to pick up on love stories like this, <laughs> so this wasn't the first time Shannon had been exposed to this kind of story. But this certainly was the first time she'd started thinking of George as a member of the opposite sex. 
She was furniture while Joyce was an honored guest and a member of the Uchiramiya family. Until now, she'd assumed that even imagining any deeper relationship with him would be impre impermissible. So she hadn't thought of it. Since it was someone else's problem, Jessica poked fun at it, seeming to, uh, to enjoy herself. It was all Shannon could do to hide her blushing cheeks. If George were to appear at a time like this, she'd have no chance of keeping her cool. They saw, they saw George come out from the entrance of the hall mansion. Entrance hall of the mansion, sorry. It looked like he'd seen them as well. He had it over waving his hand. Shannon had to frantically try and regain her ordinary composure before George reached them. Oh wow, a Christmas miracle. And our discussion, or more like Kinzo roasting the entire family. それは抜け出して正解だよ。じいさまの顔を拝むくらいなら欲病神に<笑> More than anything else, they needed a lot of money right now! That's right, this wasn't the customary annual October family conference. Eva's family had visited to apply for a business loan from the head family. Kenzo had vast resources and he lent those out to his children. Of course they didn't borrow money because they were living in poverty. How would they expand their business with the vast sums they wanted to borrow? How much uh, interest would be attached and how long would they have to repay it? This wasn't the sort of loan designed for a poor. It was a loan for those who were on the offensive. Kinzo strictly judged where it would be worth lending out his fortune and afterwards he strictly oversaw its use. So Rock and Jima would, be, would sometimes play host to this spectacle, where relatives visited and described their businesses to Kinzo. To the parents, these meetings burdened them with the strain of having to move a vast amount of money. But to Jessica, who lived on this isolated island called Rock and Jima, it was precious opportunity meet to meet up with her cousins. Uh, so being able to talk with the occasional guests such as George like this immediately cur cured the bad mood she'd gotten from that fight with her mother. <laughs><笑> もちろんうちの父さんも借り入れた分で事業を拡大し、しっかり返却できるプランを持って訪れてる。あとはプレゼンテーション次第ってところだろうね。いや。本当は脇で見させてもらって勉強したいんだけど、母さんに追い出されち
we all been there uh, ha- we all had been classmates during her period of mandatory education but they had all been young and none had possessed the composure George had mere moments ago he'd been just another guest but right now she couldn't help but think of him as something more however her thoughts were mere distractions from her work as a servant Shannon tried to chase them chase them away with a small shake of her head どうしたんだろう。あ、いえ、なんでもありません。うん。あの、お茶のご用意をしましょうか。その先ほどのアールグレイを改めてご用意します。ははは、紅茶の名前覚えてくれたんだね。嬉しいよ。そ、その、うん
but for some reason, as she was now, Shannon wouldn't be able to understand it unless he said it clearly. So, so no, <笑><笑>その、その、<笑><笑> What do you mean? So, <laughs> <laughs> she is stumbling. Chana was being uncharacteristic, uncharacteristically verbose. She hardly ever spoke at such length. George seemed fairly pleased to hear someone applaud this charm like this, but he was just a little surprised at this sudden high praise. Jessica, now sure her guess was spot on, appeared to be barely holding back laughter. Help her! <laughs> <laughs>僕に魅力を感じてくれるような寛大な女性に早く巡り会いたいね。え、きっと巡り会えると思います。ジョージ様の本当の魅力に気づいている女性はきっとみ。いえ、大勢いらっしゃると思いますよ。<la
Shannon's blood had all rushed to her head, and it looked like even she didn't know what she was babbling about. Jessica, who knew how Shannon normally was, seemed to be finding this hilarious. She couldn't hide her cackling laughter anymore. So, so no kai? シャノンちゃんみたいな可愛い子が一人身なんて信じられないね。おたこと私、主人ですからその男の方との縁なんてありませんし、その。おぼえ。ってことは、シャノンも将来素敵な男性を射止めるために、交際の練習が必要だってこと
でもその気持ちは二人で夫婦をしていくうちに育んだものよ。Yeah, I imagine it was something like that. そして今の私たちより未来の私たちの方がもっともっと仲良しだと信じてる。私は、そう、ハッピーさん、ケミー。Yes, I'm waiting for murder as well. <laughs> But you always need the, the, the slice of life happier times for the murder to hit harder. That's why I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to get a little bit of a little bit of a little bit of a little bit of a little bit o だから一時の感情に任せず慎重に相手を探すべきなのそしてそれは人生経験の未熟なあなたよりお母さんたちの方がうまくやれるとは思わないえー、そそれはそうかもしれないけどあなたは私の自慢の一人息子よどこへ出しても恥ずかしくないくらい立派に成長してくれたわバトラ君は席を抜けあなたが今やお父様の血を引く唯一の男孫。でも、バトルは、私は、I'm o u t i e は、慎重に選ばなくてはならない。As everyone related to the Uchiromiya family knew, Eva adored George immensely. But that didn't mean she had pampered him. She had been strict with him and had raised him into a wonderful boy who would betray her expectations. Uh oh, that was why she tre treasured him so. あなたの相手は、決して母さんたちの損得で決めてなんかいないわ。あなたにふさわしい本当に素晴らしい女性に母さん今はあなたの中にある青臭い若さがそれを疎むかもしれないでもこれだけは母さんの言うことを聞きなさい私があなたのためを思わなかったことが一度でもあるうーんそれはないけど今はそれで結構よさあ行きましょうお父様を待たせてるわよ急いで屋敷に行きなさいじゃあごめんね二人また後でジョージバウトゥトゥオフデムアナフトバウイングワンスモートシャノンヒダストオフトゥデマンションじゃあおばさんも行くわね楽しい話を打ち切っちゃってごめんねジェシカちゃんシャノンちゃん I almost feel like she interrupted a little bit on purpose but いえいえ気にしないでくださいじゃあシャノン私たちは行こうぜあはい大丈夫よジェシカちゃんだってきっとそのうち素敵な出会いがあるわよジェシカちゃんにふさわしい素敵な方がね私と同程度ってことは先生のガイウッシッグレイツなんだかうぜえぜ<笑>もちろんシャノンちゃんにもねあなたにふさわしい素敵な男性がきっと現れるわよ。はい、ありがとうございます。Hmm, as Eva giggled and smiled, she approached Shannon's ear with a hand over her mouth, as though she was trying to tell her a secret. Oh no! She probably said something mean. 非常に不正のあなたにぴったりの相手がきっと見つかるわよ。Oh no! Mimu Kyo Iku ni Ikasete Morata Omo wa Sirete. No! Mino Hodo o Shirinasai. Shit. So not Smori wa. Georgi wa Oto Sama no Chio Hiku Mago no Naka. Oh no! She knew what was happening. Kyo to Shitara, Mira no Shiromiake o Seo Koto ni Naruka mo Shirenai Hito. So no Kitai ni Kota Iru Tame ni. たくさんの勉強を重ねて素晴らしい大学に入り素晴らしい成績を残しているわそんなジョージと無資格無教養な使用人風情が釣り合うと本気で大思い That's mean! Those malicious words all poured into Shannon's ear without spilling a drop To Shannon it was like cold water was being poured in there 私はそんなつもりは No! This was all whispered to Shannon in secret and with the same smile as before. Jessica could only see Eva's expression didn't think it was anything other than Eva telling Shannon some embarrassing story about love. When her secret conversation ended, Eva patted Shannon's shoulders as though she was urging her on. 大丈夫よ
あなたにぴったりのお相手がきっと見つかるからアウチねダイアンじゃあねジェシカちゃんまた後でねはいまた後で秀吉おじさんとの話その時聞かせてくださいねいやーよーハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハ I'm furniture. Furniture isn't human, so I am a being who must feel, feel gratitude for even being treated like a human, and I am not permitted to wish for anything more. People sometimes develop affection for furniture they're used to using, but that is an emotion on the human side, and the furniture has no right to hope for such a thing. It's enough that furniture serves with simple honesty day after day. That feeling I got when talking to George Sama and Jessica Sama is the same as forbidden drug to me. In other words, it may be an emotion I must never experience. Shannon? Uh oh. Sakihodo kara boyari ga sumimas. Taichou demo warui no desu ka? I. I. Shitsurei itashimashita. Natsi's words were right on the mark. Even Shannon couldn't believe that she hadn't noticed Natsi until she had been called. Normally, it was essential that she focused on her cleaning at this time of the day, though she'd spent all her time sighing and hardly making any progress. Tatoe o kyak sama ga orare nakutemo. 常に気を張っていなくてはなりませんそんな様では後ろ宮家に使える使用人として情けありませんよおおじいすはい以後注意しますなあもうじき当主様と主人がお帰りになられます書斎の清掃は済んでいますか階段の清掃は済んでいますかもなっやっなあまだですええ、知っていますですからルノンにやらせておきましたおおザッツもねあなたがもたもたと廊下を清掃している時間で彼女は書斎と階段の清掃を済ませてしまいましたよそれはその丁寧にお掃除をしていたから時間がかかってしまってチャノはシンプルなオーナーそしてウォーイスカリアウトルタスチューズウィンプロプロウォーイスローウォーイスローウ In contrast, Runon clearly avoided doing extra work whenever it was possible, so she could complete her job so that it didn't result that looked almost the same to an outsider but in a much shorter time. In other words, she was a shrewd employee. She probably doesn't get paid enough. Compared to that, it probably, it's probably fair to say that Shannon wasn't very shrewd at all, talking back to a Nazi when Nazi was in a bad mood. Of course, there was nothing that Nazi couldn't stand more than a servant talking back. Her forehead creased and she spoke sternly. And yet, her slow, admonishing style of speech was even more terrifying, and finally made Shannon realize she had said the wrong thing. Naraba, Zonbunni Tene na Seso wo Kokoro Gake na Sai. Shannon, Anata ni Kono Mama, O Hiroma no Seso mo Mejimas. Toshu Sama no Taisets na Kaiga ga Tasu Kazarare, Ushiro Miyake no Hinkaku o Omanek Suru Koto mo Aru. Okori Hitots no Kosa na Yo. Anata ga Nattok Suru Made, Tene ni Seso na Sai. もちろん今日中にです。Oh, それを終えて私に報告するまで、食事も休憩も許しません。What the fuck? わかりましたね。Youch! No! はい。Okay. 結構。使用人はその言葉だけを口にするように。次の口答えには、より厳しい罰を与えますから、よく胸に刻んでおきなさい。はい、奥様。ご指導。ありがとうございます。どういたしまして。Damn. That's Auchi. Behaving as though her headache was troubling her, Natsi headed off down the corridor. When she couldn't see her anymore, Shannon hung her head and sighed. This was what happened when she had her head in the cloud. Even though I'm bad at everything I do, I should be able to at least carry out the cleaning as well as an average person can, right? Because I can't even perform that very well that I'm crying so pathetically. No! But what's even more shameful is that not only have I been unable to perform a single bit of cleaning well, 
but just now when Nazi was calling me, I imagined that person uh, appearing and rescuing me. Ah, George. If only George Sama were here, would he casually step in and save me? Surely he'd show up cheerfully, intentionally acting like he didn't know what was going on. Nimbly he change the subject and make me forget I'd been rebuked by Nazi. I kept envisioning him, suddenly appearing from the other side of the door. Or the other end of the hallway. I envisioned the kind of person that would be an appropriate partner for him in a marriage meeting. And I envisioned how unfitting I was for him. Eva clearly told me. It's been repeating over and over in my dreams. No! Kanon was suddenly there. His footsteps were always quieter than a cat's, and he never left any trace of his presence. He probably could have stood there forever and she still wouldn't have noticed him. The expression on Kanon's face was one of hatred. He made that expression for Shannon, who didn't know how to do it herself. Welp. They are probably not being paid enough is what I'm saying. And they're probably being bullied. They're like... I mean not bullied but like mistreated by their employer. You know. Like the usual shit. <laughs> Kanon <laughs> turned away as though sulking. It was a reaction that hid his true feeling. She was very like Kanon, but I was a little happy. He was getting bad for my sake. Oh, Hiroma, no, sorry, was very hard. I was a little bit. ありがとう。でも奥様に命じられたのは私だから大丈夫。カノン君にも自分のお仕事があるんでしょ。怪我らわしい仕事だよ。僕の魂なんて。とっくに汚れてる。I can't imagine. Kanon then hung his head Hmm. Shannon knew Kanon's character well. Sometimes he didn't think enough about himself. If I don't refuse forcefully, he'll help me even if it means neglecting his own job. Kanon was a little sad that his goodwill had been rejected, but he realized that he had always doing would only hurt her more in the end, and he gave me a single small sigh. <laughs> Oh, my cat is here again. Inky. No, you can't eat my carrots. Stop, you can't eat my carrots. No. <laughs> Kanon's face uh, showed that he still hadn't completely accepted it, but without being any more obstinate, he disappeared. Even though Kanon couldn't came to give me words of comfort when I was down, whoops, even so, I was dejected again because it wasn't him. That in itself was a sin. It went far beyond any dream the likes of me could be permitted to see. I don't know my place. Shannon, who had been neglected breakfast, already felt her concentration begin to waver. But if she didn't finish up cleaning the reception hall, she wouldn't receive Nazi's permission to eat. That cruel Nazi had surely told the kitchen something to that effect. I have to respectfully receive Madame's punishment. That's right. My position in the world is furniture, and I've been intoxicated by a dream that's beyond me. Man, Shadow has it rough. I finished cleaning the hallway and went to the reception hall. Maybe my hunger made my nose more sensitive. 
I could sense a delicious aroma wafting from the kitchen, even though it was far away and my empty stomach was encouraged more, even more. Until I finished up here, I wouldn't get any soup. I just had to resolve myself to doing it. Several portraits were hung in the reception hall. One of those portraits was uh, thought to hold a special meaning amongst the servants. It was the portrait of the witch. It wasn't its true name, but everyone in the mansion called it that. The name of the woman with elegant blonde hair drawn as the subject of that portrait was Beatrice. It was whispered that she might be the former mistress of Kinzo, the family head. And also that she was a great witch who had given Kinzo the gold of the legend. The witch Beatrice mapped her tonight on Rokinjima. She was gracious to those who respected her, but she would surely curse those who made light of her. It was in Shannon's character not to neglect rules and beliefs such as those. So she thought of the portrait uh, of her own other master as that person herself and always treated it carefully, treasuring it. And it had become part of her daily routine to tell the witch who only existed inside the portrait, the secret of her heart. She was furniture. Furniture doesn't complain. Cannot complain. So she had no right to speak her mind about her difficult days. She had no right to open her mouth and say those words. So she at least spoke her mind inside her heart. She spoke her mind inside her heart using the words she couldn't say loud and protested to the formless witch. Of course the witch didn't answer, she didn't console and she didn't laugh it off. Shannon could only interpret that silence as she liked, as though the witch was responding agreeably. As Shannon wiped the dust from the witch's portrait, she spoke that inside her heart. At that point, Shannon held back her tears for a moment. The sound of the rain, which had started falling along with the chill air in the reception hall, made her feel as though her happiness had increased another level. こんな心なんてこんな心なんて。なるほど。<笑> she is here, she is speaking. かぐに心を与えたか。彼も時には愉快なことをする。<laughs> the witch had never answered or laughed. Answered. And laughed. Uh oh. Was it my imagination? Was I hearing things? No, that's wrong. After all, the next words became a voice and I could hear them. Not with my heart, but with my ears. <laughs> I like this piano track. Kodai Already? I mean, I think we get to see Beatrice earlier because we already have seen her in chapter 1. Shinjitsu Shannon fearfully turned around. Is she here? Please. Yeah! Right there, she existed. Not as an illusion, but as a reality. The contrast made the lightning 
by the lightning made it clear that this was no mere daydream. Oh, this is real, alright? <laughs> yes! She is pure perfection! The witch of the portrait uh, elegantly held a golden pipe to her mouth and giggled. She laughed at the ignorance that caused humankind's thoughts to stray uh, far from the m most simple answer. それこそが一なる原子男は最初の数で世界の構成を説明しきったのだなんとも単純明快にして豪快爽快誘拐通快アラバルロファン <laughs> Karen lost any words to speak. She thought that when first meeting an unknown guest, her first words would, would be to ask that person's name. But without saying anything, Shano knew this person's name, so she refrained. No, surely it would be the greatest disrespect for someone who lived or worked on this island to ask this woman for her name. After all, she was the other master of this island, besides Kinzo. <laughs> いかにもわらわがベアトリーチであるいかにもわらわを見て最初に浮かべる表情は変わらんないかにもわらわを見て最初に浮かべる表情は変わらんない I certainly would give a look like heart eyes and star eyes <laughs> The witch giggled at how Shannon's reaction didn't betray her expectations Shannon realized that she had met with a being that mustn't be met with and she took a step backwards that's where the wall and the portrait were. So even as she gazed at the witch, the witch portrait was touching her back. <laughs> Why does she have such a good voice? くめども、くめども満たされぬ。永遠の心の砂漠。人間の基礎にして全てにして現在。わかるか知識の身を口にしたアダムとイブが知ったのは愛だったのだ。それを知ったがゆえに人は楽園を追われ、人足りえたのだ
However, almost as though she was already under the witch's spell, Shannon responded. You guys, I definitely umineko for the plot, which is this. <laughs> this woman. She is the plot. <laughs> Yes, of course. Shannon almost said that without thinking, but held back with the last bit of common sense. After all, this is a witch. A sinister being. The witch Beatrice is clearly trying to slip in through the cracks in my heart and take me prisoner. That sort of temptation which so, ma eh, which so many fairy tale picture books warned me about when I was young is right in front of me now. You kidding me? I would accept a an offer from Beatrice in a heartbeat. Maybe call me an idiot for that, but how can I refuse? わらわは確かにそなたらが意味嫌う魔女像から離れはせぬ。だが、わらわは敬う者には好意を返す。それは人間も同じであろう。そのように身構えられて好意を返せる人間もまた折らぬと思うがな。I mean she's not wrong. Shannon eventually realized how rude she was acting towards this guest, and she finally digested the words that had been spoken to her uh, a short while ago. You are no longer furniture, now you are human. As she reflected upon those words, Shannon felt as though the witch understood all her worries. Yes, because Beatrice is good. <laughs> Thank you, this is the biggest honor. I feel like there's a catch. <laughs> oh, the request is gonna be break the mirror, right? Look, here it comes. Part of Shannon's heart sent her a warning. This is what all of those scary picture books she'd read when she was little had warned her about. Shannon immediately remembered it. When he reached Rokenjima by boat, there was a tori and a shrine on a reef that was too small to be called even an izet. Uh, I'm pretty sure Kumasawa-san told me its history, but I can remember it well. A traveling shugenja, a kind of holy man, had built it or prayed there or something. <sighs> Oh, there it is! Smash the mirror! It was quite a suspicious request. Sharon didn't know the details, but anything stored inside a shrine would have to be something sacred. And she wanted me to break it? Why would the witch ask a human for help instead of doing it herself? I can imagine the mirror is like either holding a part of her power back or is sealing her. If at all, or maybe it's a way to open the game board, I don't know. There was no need for Shannon to speak her thoughts aloud. Beatrice responded to Shannon's reasonable doubt before Shannon could give her an answer. Mm -hmm. oh, okay, so it's like magic that isn't compatible. あの鏡の押し付けさえなければ、わらわはスープを飲むのにぴったりのスプーンが用意できるというわけだ。うんうんうん。そう、I think it is a seal. <笑> 
話か分かりません私の無教養のせいだとしたら謝りますこういうことだあのいまいましい鏡をわらわのために割る手間をかけてくれたなら you will be free. その褒美としてそなたの願いを叶えてやるということだ<笑>今日のわらわは本当に機嫌がいいああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああ I wonder, are we flash forwarding now? Okay, no, no, no. You're about to get bond. When she heard Shannon's words, Beatrice realized for the first time that her, uh, that her expectations had been betrayed. I'm, I'm scared, Beatrice, come on! よくでも今日までこの島は平和で何も起こりませんでしたなら鏡を割らなくても今日までと同じ平和がこれからも続いていくはずですうんなるほどなるほどそなたの言う通りだあれを割らぬなら I wonder if this mirror plays a relevance in the previous chapter. The unbreakable days before this time will continue into tomorrow and the next day. Oh, so are you telling me that you are going to have Shannon? Suffer endlessly, like repeat this day until she finally gives in. Charon <laughs> felt overwhelmed by an eerie illusion. The mirror probably existed for the purpose of restraining the witch. So Shannon broke it. The person who stood to gain was supposedly the witch herself. And yet Shannon felt somehow that she had to do it for her own sake. It felt like some premise had been switched around. <laughs> If not, Oh no. <laughs> well, geez. Break the mirror or, or you will never be loved. The witch was speaking. She was pressing Shannon, saying she must break the mirror if she ever wanted to be united with George. It was a declaration that Shannon's feelings would never be brought to fruition unless she broke it. <laughs> そなたを苦しめたかったわけではないのだがな。まあいい。愛に苦労しさを感じるも人間の醍醐味よ。お、そう、you <笑> Oh, so this world was able to be up to. such an easy thing to do? No, it certainly wasn't. So Shan was burning with infatuation and worried by love. Being tempted constantly internally with a way out was truly a cruel trial. Okay. 
愛のちぎりを結ぶべき相手を決めた時がその期限となる。Oh, so basically get George before get, get me to have a George <coughs> realize your feelings before he finds someone else. わらわは魔女だが鬼ではない。互いを愛し合う二人を引き裂く魔法は持ち合わせていないのでな。Except with death, so that an old boy be to a sky, which in me, I need no summer soda. So that our sekai de Ichiban so no tokono koto or motte ruka mosirem. Daga Sekai de Ichiban stawa she to a kagiranzo. Varawa, me I no I teo, stay. So no musumewa Sekai de Ichiban. Oh, geez, that's a threat. Yoi ga go dete. Yoi se se kyo no koshi. Ochi tsuki ga atte shiryo bukai. O mai yori utsukushiku. O mai yori soume de. O mai no yona. Muchi, muno, mukyo yo no musume ga. Do ste usawa shikaroka. Man, that hurts. Oh, my ga itiban shite. O mai ga itiban usawa shikunai. お前と後ろ身はジョージが結ばれるなど想像するだけでも罪深い愚かしいことよ愚かしい愚かしい身の程知らい義務教育に行かせてもらった恩も忘れて身の程を知りなさいおぼえジョージはお父様の血を引く孫の中では若男にあたるのよおしずぴてんわたばせん Like she's scolding her to break the mirror. So no kitai ni kotai de tame ni. Taksan no benkyo o kasanete. Subarashi daigaku ni hairi. Subarashi seiseki o nokoste iru wa. Son na joji to. Muno, mushkaku, mukyo yo na shiyou ni fuze ga tsuri yau to. Honki de omoi. Oh, she is repeating what、uh, Eva said in exactly the same text. Damn. <laughs> That laugh is music to my ears. Oh, he can see.、Uh, he can see Beatrice. At that time, Shannon, as,、uh, as Shannon held her head, trying to protect her heart from the blade of Beatrice's words, Karen ran in front of her. Karen didn't care who this woman was. If this was an enemy tormenting Shannon, whom he loved and respected as a sister, nothing else mattered. Kanon, Kanon, you're gonna die. <laughs> Seeing Kanon also realized that the being standing before him was the witch of the portrait. Don't bully Shannon. She's a good girl, and also that she was something to be feared. Shannon, ni hobi o torase takatta dake da ga. Wara wa no kotoba ga sugi, yujimete shimotta yo da na. Sore wa ayamaro. Da ga, saki hodo no yakusoku wa sonata e no hobi toshite nokoshite iruku. Wara wa no chikara ga hitsuyo nara ba, itsu demo yobi dasu to ii. その方法はすでに教えた。では、これにて今宵は退散しよう。敵意の眼差しは心地よくあるが、美容にはちと悪いのでな。<笑><笑> That's a way to see it。消えろ。お前が何者か知らないか。お前はシャノンを脅かしている。カネルが現れるな。Oh boy, you're gonna die. Kanon's words seem to deeply annoy the witch. Kotoba o erabanuka gesemme. Warawa wa uyama o mono ni kandai da ga. Welp! Uyama wa no mono ni wa zankoku de arzu. Welp, Kanon, say your prayers, write your, write your will. While she still smiled, the witch's face began to twitch, then twist itself. Then an oppressive feeling that couldn't be noticed with any of the five senses gradually filled the room. Even though they couldn't understand it, they immediately realized it was something terrifying. When you swim in the ocean and something large passes by in the water beneath you, you want to escape to land even before you learn what it is. That's exactly what this was like. Oh, 
Oh dear. <laughs> Wop Cannon took you a while. Cannon placed his body between the witch and Shannon. There was tense sweat on his forehead. At that time, the witch certainly held Cannon's fate in the palm of her hand. She didn't even need to lift a finger. She held the grasp on his fate so tight that a single twist of her smile could easily crush it. Kano understood that as well, so she started he started sweating. His knees felt weak. However, Beatrice abruptly released that feeling of tension and laughed. But only this one. So long you don't stab the hands, I'm okay. When Beatrice grinned broadly and snapped her fingers, their left hand stretched out in front of them against their will and their palms opened. It was a strange sensation as though only their left hands now belonged to someone else. It felt like only their left hands had become puppets, which were being pulled by strings hanging down from the ceiling. Well, Kano resisted, but he couldn't retract his hand for of his own free will. <laughs> what are you doing? When Beatrice held her pipe aloft, a gold-colored sparkling dust came out of the smoke and hovered in the air. Yes, the sparkle eventually became several golden gold butterflies. The beautiful butterfly stands freely throughout the reception hall, forming a fantastical and beautiful world. And the two of those butterflies alighted on the palms of Shannon's and Kanon's hands. There was a sharp pain, as though they had been burned. When the two of them tried to examine their palms, that hold on their bodies, which had been there a second ago and had gone without a trace. There was now a tiny burn mark on the palm of their hand. And it was shaped like a butterfly. Oh! Was this some sort of pact? Apparently Kano had the same mark on his hand. He stared at the witch hatefully. Yeah, probably some Beatrice marking or like um, a pack. Okay. くり考えるがいいぞ。シャン。そしてゆっくりと休み。明日の朝日に我が印を見て改めて考えてみるがいいだろう。わらわは何も強要せぬ。そなたが自らの意志で自由に未来を決めるがいい。最も。こうするものの
As Shannon and Cannon remembered the butterfly bruises on their hands and the pain they'd felt when they'd been made, they kept standing still, stunned. And from that moment on, Shannon was tormented by days of suffering and conflict. Oh no! Oh no! Probably horrible days so that she finally gives in. <laughs> Am I going to witness a lot of Shannon bullying now? I'm not sure if I'm ready. I'm not sure if I can fortify through this. え、別に<笑> Jessica's cheek had been stuffed with a chocolate-coated Shinsuko biscuit that Shannon had brought as a present from Okinawa, and it all came flying out at Shannon when Jessica cried out. Sh お魚とか好きですし。うん、うん、うん。やったからさ。健全な男女がお泊まりありで旅行に行ったわけだろ。それでチューも投げれば、ギューも大のかよ。ボップ、ノー。<笑><笑> Oh boy. <laughs> because there are dummies in this world. They are shy ones. From Shannon's point of view, it was an incredibly happy trip for various reasons, but it like Jessica found their pace to be pretty irritating. For a while, Jessica chewed her present, complaining about the room. Months and pretending to faint in uh, to faint in agony on her bed, Shannon and George had chosen to go to Okinawa because there was a huge aquarium there. But they did this because an aquarium had given them the opportunity to start going out. Since their relationship had started at an aquarium, having their first overnight trip also to be an aquarium must have held some commemorative value. <laughs> I mean, not, not on the first date, right? It do be like that sometimes, Jessica. それはその、お互い独身の男女ですし、ジョージさんがそこをしっかりするのが男女のマナーだとおっしゃって。だから、それを踏み越えるための Okay, so I'm trying to wonder if the date came before the mirror smashing or after, and if we jumped uh, beyond that point now. Shannon's face got bright red. She made a circle with both hands, restlessly inter inter eh, intertwining, separating and making heart, heart marks with them. Oh man, apparently the dramatic progress Jessica had looked forward to hadn't happened, but it seemed to have been a very important experience for Shannon in her own way. In the end, whether Jessica was jealous of Shannon or made fun of her, it didn't change the fact that Shannon had a huge lead on her. <laughs> Welp, it happens. <laughs> 
and bong. <laughs> oh no. Jessica threw several cushions at her, but midway she had an asthma attack and started to choke pretty badly. Whoop. Shannon hurriedly over uh, hurriedly ran over to a nearby side table and started searching around on top of it. Kit Kat basket was placed there and inside of it was Jessica Bronchi later. Shannon picked it up and handed it over to Jessica. Jessica's asthma attacks always came suddenly. Because of that, she always needed to carry this medicine around. That's rough. She breathed in the medicine and after a while managed to overcome her choking as her asthma finally settled down. Shannon thought this is a good chance to leave and try to exit the room after bawling courteously. Is someone waiting for her? As she did, one more small cushion came flying and hit Shannon on the head. Donk. She noticed that Jessica was on the verge of crying, half of her hair face buried in her last and favorite cushion. That that face was red and meek. No, she's she's cute too. Stop. No. Yes. じゃ、じゃ、目とか変かな。鼻とか変じゃないかな。だから彼氏できないのかな。だから彼氏できないのかな。だから彼氏できないのかな。だから彼氏できないのかな。だから彼氏できないのかな。だから彼氏できないのか
baby. As Shannon happily watered the flower uh, beds in the garden, she sensed someone's presence. She turned around, thinking that if one of the family had come to visit, she must greet them. But what she saw was that witch. Hello! Beatrice-sama. Okay, so... As Beatrice sat on the rose arch, she happily blew on her pipe. Sitting in a place like that would crush the roses, and it might have been dangerous if the arch fell over, but this was a witch after all. Showing concern for her safety was probably a waste of time. Oh, so I assume this is after a mirror smashing. Yep, okay, so I assume the timeline of events was uh, the, the one flashback, Beatrice showing up, then allegedly Shannon having unfortunate events, she smashes the mirror, then has the date with George, and now we are back afterwards the date. <laughs> It was my job, my work is what Beatrice is saying that. The witch was calling attention to something. Two things actually. First, that Shannon's relationship with George was a, was a fate that had been impossible absolutely impossible under normal sun curses. Second, that the power of the witch was great enough to overturn that fact. Shannon had just gotten wrapped up in those sweet days and had started believing the illusion that all fate revolved around her. But she remembered the witch's words. Originally, her relationship with George had been impossible. No, it might be impossible in the future as well. <laughs> いさと I wonder if uh, later there will be misfortune happening, including murder, and Shannon will confront Beatrice asking what's what's wrong with this, uh, this isn't the happiness she wanted, and Beatrice is like, I guarantee you love, and nothing beyond that. There always is a catch with deals like this, right? <laughs> Yes, I love her sass. I always forgive you, madam. Shannon's face suddenly lit up. The witch laughed lightly, as though amused by the speed of that transformation. Hmm...もはやそなたの思い人は一方的に思うだけの存在ではない互いに思い思われる恋人同士よ愛に満たされた二人にとって世界はただそれだけで成立するうーん、よしょ素晴らしき理想の世界かなマジョもやこうというもの
ほほ魔女に見上げたの It seemed that even a witch who boasted of living for 1,000 years hadn't imagined that she'd receive a souvenir from a sweet lover's trip. When she saw that surprise expression, Shannon thought of this witch as a friend for the first time. But there is a catch, I think. Wait a minute, I need to go to the bathroom. Alright, I'm back. We are eating cookies with the witch! <gasps> Stop! She's too cute! She's too good for this world planet! This witch, who surely held the terrifying power, was chomping down on sweets one after another, making it sound like a squirrel stuffing walnuts into its mouth. She is perfect, you guys! After a while, Shannon couldn't conceal her laughter. Hmm. Dolce Vita from Nero. The witch was in a great mood, fully enjoying modern candy. The thing Shannon had softly set on the table was a gold colored butterfly brooch. ふたりの中はこれからも永劫に盤石であろうが。出会いのきっかけは確かに魔法の力で与えてもらったかもしれません。でもその出会いを永遠のものにする努力は二人で協力し合って続けていくものだと思います。うん。愛もバラと同じか
ファラワの行為に素直に感謝された試しは多くない<笑>いや初めてかあは the first time <笑> Kinzo didn't thank you either <笑> rude the witch laughed heartily but it looked like a sad laugh in Shannon's eyes oh she herself had been like that in the past no maybe she was like to、uh, like that now Beatrice was definitely a witch with a strange and terrifying power. Most people probably wouldn't want to stick around her if they could help it. Surely, even those who had relied on that strange power sometimes felt fear rather than gratitude as a result. It must have deeply hurt the witch to have that happen over and over. Since the time she had started thinking that way, Shannon had tried to stop being frightened of Beatrice. This was surely something that had tormented the witch for over a thousand years. Maybe she really liked those sweets. Beatrice, who normally spoke abusively, praised the black tea that Shannon served her and looked to be in remarkably high spirits. After doing that for a while, the witch and the servant grew animated in their discussion of the trip with George. The things Shannon actually knew about Beatrice were surprisingly few. First off, she was a ghost like being who appeared in unexpected places and unexpected times. And it seemed that not everyone could perceive that she was there. Apparently, everyone has something called a wavelength, and the ability to perceive witches varies greatly among different people. Only Shannon and Kanon could interact with her enough to exchange words like this. There were a few people who could sense her presence, but most people couldn't even feel that much. So, Battler,、uh, from what Beatrice said, Kraus and his wife in particular had zero magical talent. And no matter how much she followed them around, they would never notice her. Once earlier, when Shana messed up and Nazi got really mad at her, Beatrice had started playing around. He did Nazi on the head with their pipe. <laughs> oh, jeez. I see. Nazi really doesn't notice a thing. But Shana, watching that, had burst out laughing without thinking and had gotten scolded even more. Oh, I need to see what she said about Kinzo. キンゾーも同じよ。あれにも気の毒なくらいに魔法の才能がない。Well, that's an oof! シダナ、同情に値するほど才能がない。I gave him all that money and he still doesn't see me! As soon as they started talking about Kinzo, it felt like the atmosphere around Beatrice changed. She had spoken about Kraus and the rest of lack of. The rest's lack of magic talent as though she looked down on them, but she spoke of Kinzo in a different way. Anyone connected to the Roshi Omiya family would know about Kinzo's legend,、uh, Kinzo's legend of the gold. According to that, Kinzo was given the gold after summoning the witch Beatrice. In other words, she must have had some kind of relationship with Kinzo. Mm-hmm. The wish she usually looked down on people was uncharacteristically offering her praise. While she lambasted him by saying he had no talent, she praised his efforts. So, she said, <laughs> she looks kind of smug and at the same time, yeah, okay, I guess. I think she was just being sarcastic about it. I think she just wanted to see what she could do. Her choice of words highlighted how much of a disaster this has been for her. Shannon hesitated over whether it would be safe to continue this discussion, but Beatrice continued on her own, ignoring Shannon. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Okay. 
理不尽なる賭けに全て落とす勇気と狂気ゆえにか狂気は時に魔力に通ずる That's an interesting way to see it. その点から見れば金蔵に魔法の才能が全くなかったとは言い切れんか He summoned her with nothing but the pure power of simping <laughs> Shannon felt like she was daydreaming. While everyone in the Oshiromiya family knew the story of、uh, how Kinzo idolized black magic, summoned a witch, and received the gold, in actuality it was all rambling that no one believed in. And now Shannon was having this story confirmed by the witch herself. She felt a little flustered by this incredible secret that only she knew. <laughs> In other words, he beat capitalism. So, the second thing is that the second thing is that the The single element she seemed to remember the witch using that word before. When Beatrice saw Shannon trying to remember what that was, she laughed, she laughed bitterly, waving her hand and saying there was no need to worry. この島にもう何十年も縫い止められている誰に話しかけようとも声は届かずどこへ行くこともできない That sucks なんとも退屈な数十年だったことよ So I decided to kill them all is the, the motive I guess As she laughed in self derision she tapped her teacup with her finger It made the light sound of pottery Tana didn't know whether the word self derision was really an accurate expression to describe the look on the witch's face. Shana didn't understand everything, but she could more or less figure out the situation. And it was probably on,、uh, a topic that she couldn't press the witch on easily, not unless the witch started talking about it herself. To sum up everything she had said up until now, Beatrice, who had been summoned by Kinjo's magic, could not leave this island for some reason. And she had lost her power and her form, leaving her days in boredom. During that time, her, her words had reached Shannon, who never forgot to show sincere respect for the witch. And Shannon had helped the witch regain her power, if only a little bit. As a result, it was now possible for the witch to drink tea with Shannon like this. But. Beatrice s a m a g a a t a s h i n i Varyoni, the Anokangami, a 一体何なのですかああその話かこの辺りの島で大昔いろいろとあったらしくてなそのせいでよくないものがたまり悪い歪みを引き寄せていたのだ<笑>それを旅の東洋魔術師か何かが鎮魂の社を建立して封じ込めたらしい。それ自体はわらわとはどうでもいいことなのだが困ったことに魔力の基礎が違っててな、so like、わらわの魔力にも強い干渉を及ぼしておって非常に迷惑していたのだそうだったんですか私はてっきりベアトリーチ様を封じていたものだとばかりわらわを対象にしたものではないだが神格のある鏡だったからな結果としてわらわの力を封じ込めていたわけだ That's gotta suck. 料理に例えるならこうかわらわの注文した西洋料理が厨房でまさに料理されているとするところがいざ配膳しようとしたら客席は日本風で懐石料理が並べられている場だっただから厨房は場違いな皿を出せずわらわのところへはいつまでたっても西洋料理が届かない、うん、といっただからそなたに日本風の客席を打ち壊し
場を一度白紙に戻させたのだそのおかげでようやくわらわの注文した料理が届き力が戻ったというところかもっともようやく食前酒が届いたというところよメインディッシュにはまだまだ遠い今のわらわなど靴屋の妖精にも劣る希薄な存在でな A shoe store fairy? <笑>何がおかしい<笑>魔女様の例えがあまりに面白かったものでまさか魔法の話がお料理の話に例えられるとは思いませんでした我ながらうまい表現だったつもりだがよもや笑われるとは思わなかったぞ I am really enjoying these interactions with Beatrice I didn't expect this I thought all interactions would be like、um... Maybe some calm talk, but most of it being like more regal talk, like when when Shannon and Beatrice first met. So I didn't expect this, and I'm really enjoying it. <laughs> A slightly sulky expression rose to the witch's face. Listen, every, every more line and reaction I read from Beatrice, I'm just loving her more. It was a strange expression、uh, at all to be appearing on the face of some friends as they enjoyed their tea. こう見えても昔は残酷極まりないことで知られたわらわだったが<笑>丸くなったものよ人間とこうして大いない話で茶を買わせるようになるのだから I've gotten soft she says and then episode one happened she was probably talking to herself as Beatrice gazed at the seabirds tracing the horizon she put her tea to her lips again 雲が出てきたな海も制裁をかけば灰色の水たまりに過ぎぬそうでしょうか曇っても海は美しくて真っ青だと思います<笑> Maybe the wish noticed the deep meaning behind Shannon's words She laughed lightly and set down her empty teacup もはやそなたの両目に埋められているのは黒い石ころではないらしいどうだ家具から人間に生まれ変わった気持ちは理解できておるか<笑>はい世界がこんなにも優しかったなんて知りませんでした Since the start of her relationship with George, Shannon's face had grown brighter more often. A smile had made everything go smoothly and had even changed her fortune. Shana made less mistakes in her work than she had before, and the family member's opinion of her was slowly starting to change. Just the other day, she had been surprised when Kraus, who rarely changed words with her, had suddenly started talking to her. I'm almost scared. If Kraus is like talking, I'm immediately like suspicious. よいことじゃないか。同じコーヒーなら、笑顔で継がれた方がうまいに決まっている。その笑顔でもう一杯頼めんかね。はい。That had become a chance for Shannon to gain confidence in herself. Of course, it didn't go beyond her own heart. It wasn't,、uh, and it wasn't so big a change that anyone would notice. She had begun to change bit by bit. Shannon understood it clearly. Knowing love was the same as gaining a soul. The same as being reborn from furniture into a human. There was absolutely nothing mistaken in Beatrice's words. By knowing love, Shannon had learned what it was to be human. Yes, a much honored tea party. Oh, is it canon? <laughs> the witch gripped a teaspoon and flipped it with her fingers, sending it up in the air. Humst? After that, it was launched by the fingers of some invisible person and flew straight into a nearby bush. Oh, it was canon! As I guess, the bush shook, shook violently and canon came out. Seems he had been there for, a, some, for some time watching their tea party. The spoon was gripped in his hand. If he hadn't caught it in an instant, it might hit him hard in the forehead and cause him to start oozing blood. 
<laughs> I get the feeling Canon is gonna make something stupid and, or maybe right and it's gonna anger Beatrice to the point she will actually be like Shannon, uh, I am dissolving this contract more or less I hope that it, that's not what happens but you know it's chapter 2 out of 4 in the question arcs <laughs> Kanon kept silent, but there seemed to be a slightly hostile look in his eyes. On the outside, he acted with respect, but unlike Shannon, Kanon did not entrust the witch. When Beatrice hit the table with her pipe, the tea set turned into gold butterflies, which flew upwards all at once. They then scattered in every direction, and the cleanup was already done. <laughs> Whoop! Disrespect. Kanon said it in a small voice, but the witch seemed to have heard it perfectly. She giggled, but did not reply. Shannon, <laughs> <laughs> I wonder, Kinzo is probably still going to go forward with the, um, the ritual and stuff, if this is a new loop or if this, uh, I don't know. Petri's body also became gold butterflies which carried in all directions and disappeared. It was a fantastical, beautiful scene like a blizzard of gold leaf. For a while, Shannon quietly watched the witch's exit. Kanon approached her from behind and spoke with an expression that was drastically different from hers. But she's my queen! Beatrice's <laughs> Oh well. There was a touch of sternness in Shannon's voice, which was unusual for her. To Kanon who knew her well, she must have sounded extremely stern. Kanon looking excessively surprised considering Shannon's tone fell silent. Ah. <sighs> Nesa,の言いたいことはわかるよ。Nesa,あいつにあのブローチをもらってから変わった。うん。まるで魔女の虜だよ。ジョージ様との仲を取り持ってもらって、頭が上がらないんだ。But she's not asking for anything outside the conversation. At least yet. あいつは人間じゃない。何を考えてるかわからない。だから気を許しちゃダメなんだ。そして。no! Kanon's words grew more serious. Those words probably gouged at Shannon's heart. She bit her lower lip and hung her head. Oh man, they're gonna fight, aren't they? Or at least they're gonna be in a strained relationship. You are no longer furniture. Those words Beatrice had given her, which had made her happiest, flew through Shannon's mind. Yes! Mm. No! Stand your ground, Shadon! <laughs> yes, friendship with Kanon has ended. Now Beatrice is my best friend. Stop! Yes, stand your ground! Stop it, Karon! No! Kanon's criticism seemed to have shifted away from Shannon's meeting with the witch. Shannon picked up on that quickly. 
お嬢様に聞いたよ正直あきれたねジョージ様と一緒に旅行に出られるなんて Let her be! あの身のほどを忘れてるよ姉さんはあの魔女にそそのかされて自分が人間になれたと勘違いしてるだけなんだよ、no! 聞いてカノン君確かに私たちは家具だよ人間に劣った未満の存在でもその満たない分をもし得られたならそれは人間になれたということじゃないのかなそんなものありはしないよ except except it did、うん、あるのそれを得たなら私たちは家具なんかじゃない人間になれるよバカバカしいなれるものかカノンスペットの言葉を言うと、そういうことを言うと、そういうことを言うと、そういうことを言うと、そういうことを言うと、そういうことを言うと、そういうことを言うと、そういうことを言うと、そういうことを言うと、そういうことを言うと、そういうことを言うと、そういうことを言うと、そういうことを言うと、そういうことを言うと、そういうことを言うと、そういうことを言うと、そういうことを言うと、そういうことを言うと、そういうことを言うと、そういうことを言うと、そういうことを言うと、そういうことを言うと、そういうことを言うと、そういうことを言うと、そういうことを言うと、そういうことを言うと、そういうことを言うと、そういうことを言うと、そういうことを言うと、そういうことを言うと、そういうことを言うと、そういうことを言うと、そういうことを言うと、そういうことを言うと、そういうことを言うと、そういうことを言うと、そういうことを言うと、そういうことを言うと、そういうことを言うと、そういうことを言うと、そういうことを言うと、そういうことを言うと、そういうことを言うと、そういうことを言うと、そう And this cruel world, world and this stupid hierarchy. I think that the world is a world. ならカノン君にも分かるように教えてあげるねほら姉さんの指の先を見て<笑>シャノカンキポイントアッシートワーズ・ザ・ホライゾンカノンディン・アンダーサンウォッチ・メント・エンクンドゥ・エニティン・エクセプト・ベトゥン・ザ・ホライゾン・エンシャノス・エクスプレッション・ウッチ・ンティ・ビ・ポーズ・ン・ア・リドカノン君は海が何色に見える It was an extremely simple question For a while, Kanon tried to guess at the meaning behind it, but he couldn't think of anything, so he answered obediently. Objectively speaking, the sea laid out beneath a cloudy sky could probably be described best by Kanon's word, but as Shannon closed her eyes and smiled, she shook her head slightly. It does look deep blue、oh, in, in the background illustration. うう違うの海は真っ青私には分かってカノン君には分からないならこれがつまりそういうことなの Oh, is, are they gonna fall apart? カノン bit his lower lip and was silent for a while <笑>分からないよカノン君手を出して Kano,、uh, as Kanon was taken aback, unable to understand what she was saying, she took his arm and opened the palm of his hand. Shannon softly said something there. <gasps> she gave him the brooch! That was the, that magical brooch which she had received from Beatrice. A magic charm shaped like a, a gold butterfly that could bring love to fruition. Yes, treat it with respect. But I hope that doesn't mean that、uh, Shannon's fortune is、uh, reversed. After being spoken to like that, he couldn't just throw it away. Kanon didn't know what she should do, and he stood there confused for a while, the brooch still on the palm of his hand. Shannon put the palm of her hand on top of Kanon's, and the brooch was warm by both of their hands. <laughs> But Kanon, you do know what love is. You protect Shannon like she's a sister to you. That is love too. Even as he said that, Kanon couldn't be cold hearted towards something Shannon was urging him to take. In the end, Kanon took it and agreed reluctantly, saying he'd prove that he wouldn't surrender to the witch's power. Shannon smiled and nodded back. 
カノン君は大切なことを学べるよきっと人間になれるからそうすればきっとカノン君にもこの海が美しい青に見えるに違いないネズミ色は何度見たってネズミ色さブルツブルーカノン君そう見えるのは愛がないから Because you have no No love, love is written, written in the.、Um, is written in stars. I was about to read it as it only looks like that because you have no fucks. <laughs> Or no shit. <laughs> because the howling wind, he hadn't been able to catch the main point of what she just said. So, is love a forbidden word now? So, Shana said once more. The single element of the world. She spoke once more of the world where it existed, where the sea was deep blue. Kitta, Kanon kun ni mo masa na umi ga mieru yo. Datte. Without love, it cannot be seen. That's. I really like that quote. So ko ni iru no wa dare ka. Oh. The man himself is out! Kanon desu, Oyakata sama. It was rare for Kinzo to leave his study. However, the fact that he had,、uh, had didn't mean his noble research had been suspended. He may have left the study because of a change in mood. But that didn't mean the thoughts filling his head were any different from those he had while inside the study. <clears throat> Kanon knew that no matter what the time, speaking to Kinzo when he didn't want to be spoken to would always disturb his research. Before Kanon finished bowing, Kinzo had already returned to his own world, having forgotten Kanon's presence completely. And once again, he began rambling to himself. Amidst those words, the name of that witch popped up many times. Oh, Beatrice! <laughs> his voice didn't even have to come on before I knew what he would say. <laughs> As Kano listened to his master's weeping voice with his back turned, he turned around just once. When he did, right behind his, his high isolated old master was the shadow of a person who shouldn't have been there. It was the witch. At once, thinking that the witch must be plotting to do Kinzo some harm, Kanon dashed back to Kinzo and tried to form a shield with his body. But when he saw the expression on the witch's face, that emotion of his vanished. After all, Beatrice's expression was. sorrowful. Or maybe pitying. <laughs> Right behind Kinzo, as he repeated the witch's name over and over, desiring to be、uh, reunited with her more than anything else, was the witch herself. And yet Kinzo didn't notice anything. When Beatrice tried to rest her hand on his shoulder, he didn't notice. Probably because he got so obsessed that he lost love, or whatever. It's like Shannon said. Without love, it cannot be seen. It cannot be seen. 
Oh shit. Welp, sucks for you, Kinzo. Kanon took the blue she had received from Shannon out of his pocket. By learning something new, would he become able to glimpse something he couldn't see now? He looked at Kinzo's back once more. The witch could no longer be seen there. Welp. Unfortunate. Oh, oh, what's this? What's happening? Ooh! Food! The biggest fall event of the Oshiromiya family was a family conference in October, but to Jessica there was another major event that came before that, the school cultural festival. Jessica liked school. To her, it was a place where she could let out the stress she'd built up from the rigid lifestyle she was forced to lead at home. For today's cultural festival, she'd formed a group with her friends, and then announced that they'd perform some light music on a temporary stage. Ooh, that's cool! She had prepared and practiced for this over and over until today, always anxiously wait awaiting the stay's arrival, but there was one thing that worried her. She looked at the clock. There was still little time, but she felt uneasy. Will that person really come? After taking a single deep breath, her, her heart jumped when all her friends suddenly started speaking in shrill voices. <laughs> Oh man. A glasses beast? <laughs> Let's go! Boyfriend talk. It may not be like this for all girls, but at least at Jessica's school, the cultural festival was basically a boyfriend exhibition. Jessica didn't have a boyfriend. She had many friends of the opposite sex, but no special only one. But Jessica was a little famous around the school, and everyone thought it'd be natural for her to have a fitting partner. Furthermore, her pride had led her to pretend that this was true. She'd somehow managed to keep them fooled until this year, but for various reasons she hadn't been able to escape this year's cultural festival. Oh, the uniform is cute. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. That sounds. Jessica, that sounds wrong. <laughs> ねえ。でも本当はいないんだよね。There's <laughs> another one without a boyfriend, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Jessica Biro's smile was covered with cold sweat. It was starting to deem doubtful whether she really had deceived her sharp with the friends. She invited Karon, didn't she? Hi, Nara. Karish-san no nisemono o tatete tsurete ikku to yu no wa dou deshou ka? Nini... nisemono? Do... dare o? Sonna no no kokoro atari nae ze? Well... Shannon's ridiculous plan surprised Jessica into hysterics. Even so, it was probably more realistic than the crazy methods running through her head about getting a boyfriend at the big rush before the cultural festival. <laughs> Is Shannon playing a matchmaker here, I wonder? <laughs> Because she probably has to, to plan things uh, very tightly like this when going out with George. And also Jessica has fangs too, that's so cute! 
せっかくの休みを私の見栄のために引っ張り出せないよカノン君は引っ張り出されないといっつも閉じこもってばかりいますので。And sulking and being like, I am furthered, sir. いい yes. そ,そ,そうなのいや、あでも、カノン君に悪い。Get him! Drag him out! おとなしく彼氏はいませんと白状なされてはいかがでしょうか<笑>それはそれは肩身の狭い思いをなす卒業までの短くも長い間を耐え忍ばれるだけでございますし。Oh, Shannon is coming kind of. What's it called? She, she's starting to learn the art of teasing too. 恋人同士にとって一人者のひなみ顔が何にも勝る甘い蜜なのです。ダムシシャノン私のために本気で悩んでないでしょおちょくってるでしょわっジェスカ・レッソーズ・アバウト・シャノン、her eyes teary。But Shannon was on face, laughing with her usual smile. They're being cute! <laughs> 私とジョージ様のことを茶化してばかりのお嬢様への仕返しです。Listening to Shannon's comeback, the likes of which didn't happen even once a year, Jessica hugged her cushion and rolled around on her bed, pretending to faint in agony. She couldn't stand Shannon's smile, which looked so triumphant. But right now, she was the only person Jessica could talk with. She could choke her to death with the cushion later. Oh man! いいじゃないですか、お嬢様。文化祭ではありますが。カノン君と一緒に遊びに行くチャンスですよいやそれはそうだけどいやいやいやいやジェスカ buried her head in her favorite pillow to hide the fact that her face had been growing red and she grumpily chewed on the fingernail on her thumb it was really it really was a reaction to be appreciated Shannon and Jessica were、uh, of about the same age of the same sex and friends And they were both right in the middle of puberty. They could never talk about,、uh, enough about love. That's why they could talk freely about these topics to each other. Jodeska ha had heard a lot about how Shannon and George's love was progressing, and Shannon ha had heard a lot about what type of Jessica liked, what kind of men she might be interested in. Jud judging by Jessica's reaction, it'd probably be rude for us to go into precisely what these things were. However, this story won't get anywhere if you just have Jessica rolling around forever, so let's dive in. Jessica had me thinking about Khan ever since he'd shown up. It was extremely rare for young men to visit Rokinjima, so maybe it was natural for Jessica, a girl in puberty, to develop an interest in Kanon. But if anyone said that, it would destroy the romantic ideals of a maiden's pure heart and love at first sight. Oh wow! Tana had been with Kanon a long time at the orphanage, so she'd known him since before they started working. So, Jessica had always asked persistently about what his hobbies were, what his favorite food was, what type of girl he liked. Even to Shannon, it was clear that Jessica was infatuated with Canon. Oh! Canon can a date on its red asset. E. Kikaja, I must say. Nemo, demo, demo. Canon can you that is skinner to talk a hiroka musil and I see. No, Snunkan on near party needs kills at a kill works. I wonder, Saman, a yona, son of Janaika Tao. Nan de Stoke, Jody Saman in a rai master. そうそう、ツンドラとかいうそうだよ。<笑> no, it's Sundere! She's... I'm gonna start calling Sundere Sundora, though. へえ、さすがジョージ兄さんだな。未来のトレンドがわかるのかよ。すげえぜ。おぼえ。じゃなくてってことは、私ってタイプは時代がずれてるってことじゃねえかよ。Maybe? Oh no. It took several days of wasted efforts, but in the end, Jessica agreed to the plan of having Kanon pretend to be her boyfriend. Oh boy, how is it gonna be like? Is he gonna stand there and be like, oh,、uh, I'm furniture? <laughs> Jessica regretted calling out at such a bad time. Kanon always looked sullen, but he had some bad days and some better days. Unfortunately, this reaction was the former. I, yes, Sano sa. Eto. 
All that confidence and effort she'd built up practicing in front of a mirror all night was wiped up in about 5 seconds. Jessica turned bright red and hung her head. When he saw that Kano sighed, Jessica thought he was exasperated with her and her face went pale. Shannon, <laughs> if you say no, she's gonna. Don't do her dirty, please. Shannon, Kara. Oh man. Jessica kept yelling with a strange voice and a broken smile, like a tea kettle filled with boiling water. As Kano watched this, he sighed again. Kano wasn't an idiot either. He fully understood what Jessica intended by inviting him. But to be honest, playing along with Jessica's love game seemed like it's, it'd be nothing more than annoyance to him. However, Shannon had asked him over and over. He was deeply indebted to her, so he couldn't refuse. Oh, And that brooch was in his pocket. Could this strange turn of events have been brought about by the magic power residing in this brooch? Ridiculous. But we remember what Shannon had said to him that day. Could Shannon see something he couldn't? I don't understand Shannon's feelings. We are furniture. As if we could ever become anything more. It was truly odd exchange between Jessica, uh, who was still rambling on in a strange voice, and Kanon who sighed deeply. Alright. You better show up, Kanon. You gotta show up. As my friends all gathered together, they were looking this way with hard to describe expressions, whispering to each other in small voices that weren't small anymore. My attempt to play dumb felt pretty transparent, even to me. Did I really just say sorry, who is it? Like, I don't know who just showed up. Ah, it's useless, it's useless, my mind's going blank. <laughs> <laughs> you couldn't show up more edgy than this. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> Oh my god, okay, so I know tips can only be, uh, should only be seen after finishing a chapter, but I have to see how this full outfit looks like. I just have to. Uh, system? What the actual shit? <laughs> I can't! <gasps> oh my god, it's edgy as shit. I hope I didn't wake up the neighbors. My God, dude! Come on, he's like one or two years younger than Jessica. ちが分からなかったものでおそくなって申し訳ございませんあいかんいやそのその格好も似合ってるぜわおしゃのが普段着では良くないと言って先日一緒に買い物あいわすホーピングジャケットはあれはあれはあれはあれはあれはあれはあ
The way he has his his hands in his pockets, he's just uh, like screaming edgelord energy. He's like hit. <laughs> oh, I know what that outfit reminds me of. Reminds me of Sasuke. <laughs> it reminds me of Sasuke, but with a mantle. And the way he says, so many girls, it's uncomfortable. It's so Sasuke like, like, nobody will ever understand my pain. <laughs> Siaska seems just as uncomfortable. It looked like being bathed in everyone's interest with gazes was hard on her. When he saw Jessica's appearance, Kana thought he might have made things difficult for her by coming. No! You're being a good doofus. So many brackets. So Oh, my God. Bang! Thunk! Bam bam! Slam! Crash! Did she just beat up her friends? By the time Kamono opened his eyes, a horrible tragedy had occurred in the room. Everyone had been driven into the walls, their arms and legs outstretched. <laughs> Jessica had slipped her brass knuckles back into her pocket before Kano's eyes opened. <laughs> Holy shit, she's a hard ass! <laughs> Ooh, she pushed Kanon's back as he seemed uh, to be having trouble moving himself and chased him out. Even though Kanon was confused by Jessica's attitude and her panicky state, which he'd never seen before, he followed her instructions and headed in the direction she, she had indicated. After seeing him off with an awkward smile, Jessica slammed the door shut and yelled loudly. <laughs> oh my god, they made a bet. <laughs> yes, her her edge lord boyfriend is very very uh what's it called? Enviable. <laughs> Jesus, what an embar <laughs> second hand embarrassment here. When Jessica took the brass knuckles out of her pocket again, everyone energ energetically returned to their tasks. Kano went down the corridor Jessica had shown him and ran into a temporary stage setup where the vending machine should have been. It was probably being rented by the hour by some group or club. The ones singing were student groups, but the group was still incredibly excited. Despite that clatter, he leaned against the wall in the darkness by himself. Pfft, of course he did. This is this is what they call high school. 
It sure is noisy. <laughs> That's what Kanon thought. Then remember Jessica just now, acting in a way that he'd never seen before. Honestly, when she was in such high spirits that alcohol might have been involved. To him, remaining composed until intellectual at all times was the highest virtue. In that sense, it was very hard for Kanon to get used to the atmosphere of a school culture festival. He had the responsibility to report everything he saw and heard to the master. So he also had to report about how Jessica had acted without restraint earlier. At the very least, it was not fitting for the daughter of the Ush Ushurumiya head family. Master Cross-sama, and especially not since sama will probably be angry. If I'm to report it in a way that protects me lady, should I blame it on inappropriate school friends? <laughs> Kano thought back on how Jessica had acted early and sighed again. He could understand Nazi's headache a little now. Come to think of it, Nazi Sama, as the president of the PTA, was supposed to go to an informal gathering after attending the ceremony in the gymnasium. She said she wouldn't be able to see Milady's performance, didn't she? That's probably for the best. <laughs> Sir, uh, several female students kept glancing at me. It seems like they're always spreading the same things Milady's school friend said, and it's truly unpleasant. Come to think of it, didn't Shannon warn me? If you walk alone at something like a school festival, you'd better watch out because lots of strange people will come and talk to you. Uh, uh, oh, uh, oh boy. Just as I expected, the group of girls I'd never met started talking to me. Their stare started to make my back tingle. Didn't she tell me some magic words that could chase them off in times like this? Um. <laughs> Oh, I thought he was gonna be like, piss off. <laughs> and it worked. Instant reaction. Well, that got rid of them, but it hasn't really changed the number of people staring at me. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> Telling the entire school, I see. <sighs> There is no way I'll ever come to a place like this again. Kanon sighed for about the zillion time that day. When he did, the lightning changed and the standing audience started cheering. He looked around and realized that there was a sudden, there was suddenly a large group of people there. And like earlier, there were mostly guys. With this huge crowd, he couldn't even see the stage. Fortunately, there was a fallen beer case nearby, so he tried using that as a footstool. When he did, he realized that there was now a new group on the stage. Their leader is Milady. She's changed into stage clothes and she's even holding a guitar. <gasps> I didn't know she could play. Then again, maybe she can play. I've seen her practicing air guitar before. Nazi Sama wouldn't approve of any hobbies outside of study. Maybe she was al always practicing in secret. Come to think of it, she's been returning really late from school recently, hasn't she? Maybe she's been practicing at school far away from Nazi Sama's prying eyes. It really is for the best that Nazi Sama didn't come. If Milady were to get scolded by Nazi Sama after putting so many hours to practice, then she'd probably be rejected. Oh man, she's loved! It's what she deserves to be loved! I could hear Jessica Sama's forceful voice through the speakers. Jessie Sama? Maybe that's her nickname at school. The students in the audience kept calling out that name. I'm a little offended by the crude name. It's inappropriate for me, lady. <laughs> Jessica Sama was in high spirits as they kept shouting Jessie Sama. Everyone uh, was here was probably a fan. Her mic performance picked up on that and electrified them even more. It was almost like a music program on TV. At first, he thought this was all silly, but that feeling had changed into appreciation. It was incredible in its own way. Kano never listened to music of his own free will, but he'd often heard the, mu the kind of music the, the Shurumiya family liked. Since it was, uh, was almost all classical, Kano had naturally taken a liking to that kind of music. So to Kano, the song that Jessica sang was, how should you say it, extremely colorful. In any case, if Natsu Sama heard it, she'd probably faint. Rock song bad uh, is probably what Natsu thinks. What? <laughs> oh my god! The original Hiromi Neko graphics! Oh my god, was that, was that a Riga in there? Hmm. 
But everyone looked like they were having a really good time. Some diehard fans who had been brought pen lights sang all along and they danced crazy with the same movements, almost as though it had been planned ahead. On the stage, Jessica Sama also sang enthusiastically, breathing with sweat. He couldn't find a single element that was appropriate for a daughter of the Rushirumiya family, but it looked like so much fun. I have the feeling the mod for either the, forgot to patch in the actual CG, or this was actually implemented in the PS3 game. I'm I'm wondering. Again today behind me, the sound of footsteps. Oh yeah, Shiro Sama is stop. Bro! Curses his appearance, sacrifices torture. Only Kakushi does that make a good snack. Don't say Marisa! Is that oh my god, they're mixing oh are they mixing Toho and oh, Higurashi references? I'm losing my mind here. Must not go along with it, but at any rate, Milady is full of life and looks like she's having a great time. As I watched Milady enjoying herself, I thought, could this be Ushirumiya Jessica's true nature? Don't I know better than anyone that during her life on Rock and Jima, she's had no choice but to kill her sense of self? So the time she spends not as Milady, successor to the Ushirumiya family, but as a single girl called Jessica, living life to the fullest must be very important to her. I've worked close to Milady, seeing her in all seasons, and thought I knew everything about her. But that was all limited to one side of her, the Milady of Rokinjima. We are furniture. We serve on Rokinjima and end our lives on Rokinjima. So I've come to think of Rokinjima itself as our whole world. As though, like in po Potelemic theory, the ocean spilled off the end of the world into an abyss. But when I look at Milady like this, I can see how horribly narrow that outlook is. I still can't go along with the excitement of the crowd, but I feel like I can see something that cannot be seen on Rokinjima. I'm not sure if this is the unseeable thing Shannon was talking about, but the ocean still doesn't look blue to me. He is the are his feelings starting to change? Is Canon becoming a human? Kyoa Jeska no Gakko no Bunka Sai Dottana. Kojo Sensei wa Ogenki de Ola Takane. Eh, Ogenki na Yodeshta. So so. たたみや議員もおいでになっておりました。あなたによろしくと特に言っておりましたよ。うん。相変わらず言葉を相関ね。そのようでした。あの方も精力的な方です。そうそう。あと、江本会長もおいででしたっけ。Talking about the formal stuff in school, I see. Naturally, the topic of Jessica's cultural festival came up at the dinner. School events often became a social gathering for local volunteers. It was the same for the Ushiromiya family, who were celebrities around here. Natsu remembered the name of one VIP after another at the social gathering, telling crowds the news about them. Jessica didn't really have any interest in that discussion and really slurped her pumpkin soup like お嬢様、あまりお行儀がよろしくないかと。ネバ。ヘイヘイ、それは悪かったぜ。ジェシカ、そういう言葉遣いは改めるよう、いつも言っていますよ。ネバ。はい。Jessica answered discouraged when he saw that Krau smiled a little and paused his conversation with Natsi. ジェシカの方はどうだったかね？文化祭は。見ていましたよ。よく頑張っていましたね。え、うわ。Uh oh, did she catch her singing? <laughs> Jessica's face turned bright red. She probably hadn't imagined that Natsi would actually come to see her on stage. I don't think she did. I think she's tricking her. 
She felt a mix of happiness and embarrassment. Actually, she hadn't really wanted her mother to watch, since she didn't want to be told that her music was inappropriate for the Lutrimia family. But it certainly didn't make her unhappy to hear her parents say she'd done a good job after watching her try her best. Oh boy. The smell that had been there until a second ago crumbled like sand. Jessica immediately realized that her mom was talking about something different. Jessica was also the school student's president. Student president. She had no interest in doing something so annoying, but her parents had been pushy, so she grudgingly accepted. Unfortunately, she was popular at school, so she won the election easily. Nazi was praising her for the student council sponsorship ceremony at the beginning of the cultural festival. Ashley had just carried that out half-heartedly. After that, she immediately met up with her friends and held a stage rehearsal for the rest of the time. Man, that sucks. きっと。Oh, like me? Which I have no uh I pause almost no times when reading. Oh man, that sucks. After she finished eating, Jessica didn't feel like going straight to her room. Her room was basically the place her parents had ordered her to be. So perhaps for Jessica, instead of returning to her own room, being in an unknown location at large mansion was a meager form of resistance. Jessica felt that even be uh, being in the mansion made it hard to breathe, so she went outside to the rose garden. <sighs> <laughs> Tesca laughed at what she was sulking over. She laughed at what kind of words she could possibly have been expecting. That was dumb of me. In the end, I was just acting like an entitled brat. I'm a little exasperated with myself and it makes me want to laugh. <laughs> <laughs> Just as she was about to force a laugh, Kanon suddenly started talking to her and she choked. <laughs> Please compliment her stage playing. Jessica's expression became the one she always wore when looking at Kanon. The listless Jessica from a second ago was gone. If he had still only known Jessica as the eventual successor of the Roshiromiya family, as he had until yesterday, he might have mistakenly thought that Jessica's mood had sprung up back to normal. But that wasn't right. He now knew a part of her that he couldn't have seen until yesterday. So he understood that there was no way Jessica actually felt the way she appeared. <laughs> Oh man, even though she had heard the words she most wanted to hear, Jessica acted shyly and couldn't accept them openly. The harmonica? Uh, it's a respectable instrument. At the time, Kano had never felt as though he'd been looking down on Jessica in this way. But all the people he'd been playing special instruments were on the other side of the brown tubes in the TV. At the very least, he'd been uh, under the impression that it'd be impossible for Jessica. But... I'm not sure anymore. He's becoming human! Oh, 
買うですし。All right, Jessica. Get some manners in him. いろいろ爺様から援助をもらってるってのは知ってるし、それに恩義を感じてるのも知ってるよ。でもだからって、家具なんて言い方はあんまりだぜ。私たちは同じ人間じゃないかよ。カムン君は私が歌ってるのを見てどう思ったとても楽しそうに見えましたそれは多分違うぜえ楽しそうに見えたんじゃなくて羨ましかったんじゃないおおそんなことは彼女は彼女は彼女は彼女は彼女は彼女は彼女は彼女は彼女は彼女は彼女は彼女は彼女は彼女は彼女は彼女は彼And to trick himself out of that emotion, he called himself furniture over and over. But I'm dumping this family soon! Masono,いろいろな面倒がこれからもあると思う。それについては、運のない星の下に生まれちまったと諦めるしかないさ。多分、カモ君が福音の家で生活しなければならなかったのと同じに。私たち自身にはどうしようもない。生まれる星は選べなかった。そうかもしれません。ただ、私とカノン君では大きく違うところが一点ある。Which is? I am furniture and me lady is not. He was about to say that, but stopped. わかりません。カノン君は自らの運命が自分のすべてだと思って諦めた。私は。こんな運命じゃ納得できないから自分の思い切りを頑張ろうと思っただから後ろ宮家のお嬢様をやらなければならない窮屈な自分と自分の好きなことに精一杯な自分というもう一人を作った I can imagine she would be the type to break away from her family as soon as she's independent enough もう一人の自分 I respect her カノン君は自分のことを家具だからと言い聞かせてきたそう言い聞かせなきゃならない辛いことがきっとたくさんあったんだと思うそれについては本当に気の毒だと思うでもそれだけでカノン君の人生を全て決めちゃうなんて私はそんなの悲しいと思うんだよ<笑>人はさ、うん、自分の中に自分が本当に好きになれるもう一人の自分をいつでも作り出すことができるんだよ。現実逃避とかとは違うぜ。そのもう一人の自分でいるとき、私は最高に生きているって実感できる。だから、普段の日常がどんなに窮屈で退屈でも、私はきっと窒息せずに生きていけるってわけ。Yes, the t o r of stuff is important. 自分の中に、自分が本当に好きになれる自分を。To make another me, one that isn't furniture. Through her relationship with George Sama, has Shannon given birth to another self that isn't furniture? And did this other Shannon see something that cannot be seen by furniture? Kano couldn't reply, but that was answer enough. He had no concept of a private life, so Kano would always be Kano. So furniture would always be furniture. Kano couldn't Kano. I wonder. In the Fukuin house, new graduates would be given new families and new life, so they were all also given a new name. In his case, that was Kanon. Before he had thought of himself as Kanon and no one else. But he remembered. There definitely had been another self that wasn't Kanon. But that was far, far away beyond the distant fog of oblivion. Free yourself, Kanon! Kanon Kunja Naitoki no Kimiwa, what the motto, Jiuni, it's the Eto Munda. 
free yourself from from the binds that are canon. Those words definitely weren't just lip service. Jessica had also been like this in the past. She had cursed her own birth into an environment different from all of her friends at school. Only she had been in a heavily constricted environment, forced to learn of all sort of things. And she had even been told of whom she was and wasn't allowed to play with. It may have been sad, but she'd given up, resigning herself to the fact that she'd been born under that kind of star. But one day Jessica stopped giving up and surrendering. Stuff like Ushiromiya family customs and pressure didn't matter. She created a real Jessica inside herself who, who could do what she really wanted to do. Yes. He'd once thought of his real name as being completely meaningless. Because of that, he thought that Kanon summed up everything about him. And now Jessica was telling him to create something new, another self that wasn't Kanon. I want to know, what is it? He was silent for quite some time. Maybe Kanon's real name had risen to the tip of his tongue. After hesitating for a long time over whether he should say it, in the end, he didn't. He swallowed it back down. Those words contained a faint rejection. I am furniture. I mean, you can be a new canon. Man, that's sad. Oh shit! Canon clearly voiced his refusal. It was with a rage that he normally didn't show. Jessica couldn't say anything back and was struck silent. Oh man. I mean, in this restricted environment? No. But ducks can fly too! False, they can! Jessica had unconsciously gone along with Kanon's forceful manner of speaking, but she realized that she had a shouldn't fire back and swallowed her words. その苦労も知らない。だから君がどうして自分を家具だなんて言い出すようになったのか想像もつてもして君は家具でもアヒルでもない。ちゃんとした人間だぜ。シオンとしてのカノン君は家具だと言うならそれでもいいよ。でもな
Kind of the wrong time to bring this up. あ、僕は人間に限りなく近い姿をしたから。シャノンのように バカなってことはないだろ。そりゃ、ジョージ兄さんは立派な人だし、両親の期待も背負ってる。確かに結婚とかになれば、エヴァおばさんがいろいろと口出しをしてくるだろうし。まあ、その手もな。ジョージ
Oh shit, Kanon, we have some shit coming for you for this. お前が知っているのは恋の急ピットなんて洒落たものじゃない。お前は結ばれぬ者たちに恋を見せて、たぶらかして楽しんでいるだけの悪魔だ。そう思うも自由よ。わらわが力を貸した人間の多くは、お前
わらわの存在など夢か幻のように消し去ることもできよう、well, 忘れ去られることほどわらわに悲しいことはないだがわらわは必ずよみがえるそしてその日がいつ訪れても後悔することのないよう自らを戒めよわらわは必ずや再臨しこの島の真の主としてすべてを支配する。Yes, my queen, anything you wish. その時こそ、再び黄金鏡の扉が開かれる。欲深な亡者たちが、必ずやわらわを呼び覚ます。くどい。早く消え去れ。黄金の魔女 !And she goes! The witch became a cloud of cold butterflies that sca and scattered away, leaving behind a scornful laugh. The whole area sparkled like a gold blizzard in a snow globe. It was a fleeting, fantastical scene that disappeared in a heartbeat. The witch could no longer be seen. However, Kanon felt like he could still hear that shrill, unpleasant laugh. Ah, you guy, you guy. なぜに久しぶりの人の世はこうも愉快なのか恋に狂え黄金に狂えそのどちらにも狂わぬものなど人間にあらずおわおなるほどゆえに家具とは言い得たり<笑>家具は人間に奉仕するために生み出されるそしてわらわは退屈なる千年の慰め物として人間を敷いてあげる Alright, I'm back. And I think I'm gonna wrap this up soon. So I'll finish reading this scene and then I'll finish for tonight. <clears throat> I マキタル恋の種は二つすでにマキタル種と含めてこれで三つほほベアトリーチイエスなぜ私を一人この苦害に置き去りにしたのか私は憎い You, you hate, I hate you, and I yet I love you. 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 お前にはわからぬ我が嘆きも苦しみもわからぬお前だけは我が苦しみを理解してくれているとお前だけは我が最古の友人であると信じているのに、oh, なぜに理解できないというのか Because I'm furniture おおベアトリーチなぜ私だけを置き去りに What? <laughs> no! <laughs> She's not okay. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> man. 
Kind of really, really, you really did a number on her. Oh, Oita wa Shia Jessica sama. Shinshi kara kikoete kuru susuri naku koe ni. Watashi wa jijo o shiritsu mo doshiyo mo nai no de gozaimasu. Well, subete wa wakasugi ta futari to chikasugi ta kyori. Soshite umareta iye gara ga tousugi ta iue no hineki. Watashi wa tada tada ojo sama no okimochi o kumi tori ashio to okoroshite. <laughs> okay, so I believe this is the end for the scene. Okay, so I'm gonna finish for tonight. Make to save state just in case. That's it. And... Okay, I believe now... Alright, so... Enough for today. Next. This was a good chunk. Of um, of this chapter, so all right, that was a good start for the for the chapter. I'm enjoying it a lot so far, and I'm curious how the the murder is gonna f um, fold out later in the chapter. Seems like it's gonna be focused on Kanon and Shannon, as well as a little bit of Jessica and George. I can't wait to see what else there is, especially more Beatrice scenes. I mean, she is perfect. All right. So next week there will be more. And uh, we'll see how far we get next time. Bye bye, guys. Have a good night.